Archie. Is that a factor anymore? Does a coach deserve <laughs> yeah. to be to be fired? But Larry Coker certainly is a victim of his own success. He wins a national championship. He doesn't lose but nine games yeah. in his first five years. This year, he loses six games. All the other problems. Spencer, good coach, good man, but it was going to happen. Guys, I've known Larry Coker for over 23 years, and yes, the difficult question here to answer is, yes, he did deserve it. Listen, this started uh, last year with 37-point loss to LSU, three melees, as Archie alluded to, and of course, an unexplained death. And that all happened under his watch. Now, the pure football in me says that, you know what, you can't give a guy an apple and a roadmap who's won 80% of his ball game, but that's the case here. All right, Tony Barnhart uh, tells us the search for a new coach has to start with Rutgers' Greg Schiano because of his ties there. Also, Tony says, even though they've denied it, watch Steve Spurrier and Nick Saban yeah. as and names Rich, of interest. You know Rich Rodriguez's name is going to come <laughs> yeah. up, yeah. and because he spent eight years there, Tommy Tuberville will definitely be mentioned. Mm -hmm. Whoever it is, guys, that name has got to be marquee and has got to ooze credibility. And, of course, you've got to be an excellent recruiter because they don't have great programming facilities there at Miami. All right, we'll, we'll have more on this at halftime. One game of note going on right now. Texas needs a win to clinch the Big 12 South. Taking on Texas A&M, Jamal Charles took it in as they opened the fourth quarter. It's a one-point game. Well, coming up next, it's LSU and Arkansas. Enjoy the game, everybody. The Home Depot SCC on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot, Sonic, Liberty Mutual, and by Toyota. Oh, you're home early. What's the point? Everyone's giving all those great gifts from Home Depot this year. Oh, where's the remote? This year, the Home Depot is the place for great gifts, like a Magic Chef wine cooler for just $79.99 or a Charm Glow gas grill with side burner for $1.99. Only at the Home Depot. an insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. What would you do if some guy killed your daughter and the jury let him walk? Vigilante justice will not be tolerated. We intend to pursue the death penalty to the end. New Close to Home tonight. The beauty queens are the team to beat. They're not evil blondes. A new amazing race after 60 minutes. Okay, okay, let's uh, skip the chit-chat and get down to business here. Now listen, I called you guys together because this office is consistently our worst performer. I need all of you thinking of ways to improve our bottom line. So let's just sit here a while and toss around some ideas. This isn't a conference call, Henkel. I'm actually in the room. Feel like surprising a few people? Star Wars, for the first time ever. All six movies, all in high def, all on your schedule. Only on Cinemax and Cinemax On Demand from Comcast Digital Cable. Get Cinemax now to see the entire Star Wars saga. See each movie when you want, as often as you like. All in spectacular HD. Only with Comcast Digital Cable. Get Comcast Digital Cable with Cinemax and Cinemax On Demand for just $49.95 a month for three months. Dogs Tech, then post game, Saturday starting at 3.30 on CBS 46. Houston Nutt is in his ninth season as head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. 
None has been better than this. His team already in the SEC championship game. Today, Darren McFadden and the rest of the Hogs get ready for the Tigers. Welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS from War Memorial Stadium in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. No better place to hear the call of the Hogs. Fifty three thousand plus on hand as LSU comes into Little Rock with a nine and two mark to take on the once beaten Arkansas Razorback. Good afternoon everybody Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson happy day after both of these teams with much to be thankful for a lot to play for Arkansas by winning out has a chance at the BCS title game LSU with a win today has a chance at a BCS bowl game. Gary, let's talk about this running attack of Arkansas led by Darren McFadden. You know, Vernon, uh, modern football with a you know functional passing attack for Arkansas, you need a great running back, and they have a great running back. Uh, the SEC knew about him. Now the nation knows about Darren McFadden. He is a wonderful blend of power and speed, and he does it whether he's lining up at tailback where he rushes off the ball as well as anyone in the country. But this year, he's playing some quarterback where he throws the ball, and he's so valuable to this football team. He's on kickoffs where he returns kickoffs. Sometimes you think there's got to be more than one number five, but there is just one number five, and he's enough for Arkansas. LSU has made the trip here, and they will be first on the field. Nine and two for the year. This is their fourth game on the road against a top ten team. And uh, Gary, this LSU team, Jamarcus Russell, is emerging yes. as a great quarterback. He really is. You know, he had all the measurables. We all knew that. He can throw the ball. He's huge, great size. But it's been his intangibles lately, his leadership skills, his come-from-behind skills to win football games. Right now, he's playing quarterback as well as anyone in the country. When he's hot, LSU is tough to stop. Come the Hogs. We'll have the kickoff after these messages. Let me tell you this, pal. The Fritos Chili Cheese Wrap is a full... on the precipice of greatness. There's something I think y'all need to hear. What day is it, son? What day? Time to play till the whistle blows. And that thundering herd of Razorbacks getting ready to take the field. 
And to take on the LSU Tigers, we'll spend a moment with Tracy Wolfson and this Chick-fil-A tailgate report. Thanks, guys. No matter what happens today, Arkansas is headed to Atlanta for a shot at their first SEC championship. But still, this Thanksgiving feast is full of importance. LSU's a big rivalry. It's always the day after Thanksgiving. Always going to be a packed house. Always going to be two chin straps. You better buckle up both of them. Our guys won the championship outright last week. But they want that boot. They want that trophy. They want to beat LSU in Little Rock. And uh, they love playing in Little Rock. And uh, we want to be the first team in Arkansas ever to go undefeated in the SEC. And Houston not didn't even mention their national championship hopes. So we can expect a sensational scene here at a sold-out War Memorial Stadium where Arkansas is 20-1 and under Nutt. Their only loss, 2004, against LSU. Guys? All right, Tracy, thank you. This game, as are all of our games on CBS, brought to you in high-definition television. Well, it could not be a more glorious day after Thanksgiving. Just spectacular here in the heart of Arkansas. 68 degrees, a slight wind, 5 to 10, and the forecast is sunny. LSU leads the all-time series. Last time they met a year ago, 19 to 17 in Baton Rouge. This is the first time ever they have met when both reside in the top 10. LSU won the toss. Arkansas will receive. This is only the second time this season that the Razorbacks lost the coin toss. The other time to Ole Miss. This is Felix Jones. And he's uh, one yard in. He'll bring it out. And does so to the 20-yard line. Now let's take a look at the starting offense presented by Applebee's. Sophomore Casey Dick gets the start. Started the last four last year. Lost that job to the freshman Mitch Mustaine. Came on after the first series against South Carolina and led them to victory. Up front, Ugo, Parker, Luigs, Felton, Zach Tubbs. It's a fine offensive line. Marcus Monk, Damian Williams, the wideouts. McFadden having an All-American year. And the starting fullback will be Mitch Petrus. Out of the gun. They hand it off to Felix Jones. He's got a lot of room. Jesse Daniels can't make the tackle. LaRon Landry finally does. But a little trickeration on the first play. Well, right now, Arkansas has rushed for more yards on one play than they did the entire game last year at LSU. 35 yards last year, 40 on the first play. That quick motion that Gus Melzahn, the trademark of this offense, quick motion, quick handoffs, and wow, did they get outside. Farad Jackson, nice block to the outside. Nice first play. Now McFadden splits wide to the left side. Top side, here's Casey Dick. McFadden inside cut. Hauled down by Charles Alexander, number 91. But it's a gain of seven. Defensively for LSU, this is the number one defensive unit in college football. Jackson, Dorsey, Alexander, and Pittman, the linebackers. High Smith, Cotrera does not start. It's Derry Beckwith in that spot. Zenon, Landry, Daniels, and Jackson in the secondary. Second down and three. This is McFadden, the Wildcat formation. Got him! Robert Johnson, who started the year, is the number one quarterback. How about that? How about that? It was Johnson who started the opener against Southern Cal. Went to wide out, makes his second catch of the season. You just don't see stuff like this. I'm telling you, I've done this for a long time. Here's the starting quarterback against USC. He's going to run the post. Here's the leading runner for the team. He's going to throw the pass. How about that? Terrible leverage to the outside that time by Zenon. And a perfect throw from number five. For the season now, McFadden is a perfect four for four throwing the ball two for touchdowns here's dick with the hand of uh, the uh, play fake buys time throws it low it is incomplete intended for ben cleaver 
I'm still stunned at Robert Johnson as the wideout. I know. And McFadden throwing it. Boy, you, you talk about a script to start a game. Here's the last play. Casey Dick going to Cleveland to the outside. Could have been a little bit of a push. Well, there's no could have. It was a little push prior to that ball getting there, but obviously it was not seen. <laughs> They'll go from the Wildcat formation again. They first used this middle of the season against Ole Miss. And here's McFadden keeps it to the one. Remind you of any other quarterback doing that? Yeah, a guy that, named Tebow? That's the Tebow package, but this guy <laughs> is a Tebow plus. Yes. Actually, he throws about as good as Tebow right now. <laughs> oh, should I say that? Oh, oh no. Here we go. All you're right. You're in trouble in <laughs> There you go. The Wildcat package. Now, that's a head of steam. Beckwith with the bad knee who started the game. There's the quick snap. They ran this before against Alabama. McFadden. Touchdown! Flag on the play, though. Yep. I think I think there was a flag on the play. The flag was thrown by the same man who signaled touchdown. Here's Rocky Good, a referee. Offsides, defense, number 94. Kelly Stefan, all good. How do you like to start for Arkansas? That's, a, that's incredible. I'll tell you, a guy getting ahead of steam like McFadden, 235 pounds, 225 pounds, that's tough to stop. Jeremy Davis on for the extra point. He's missed only one this year. That came in the overtime game against Alabama. Low snap, but a good hold. But the kick is missed. Wow. The kick is missed by Jeremy Davis, the sophomore from Fort Smith, Arkansas, saw Jacob Skinner had trouble controlling that low snap. Yeah, it, it didn't look good right from the start. Low snap, probably missed the spot slightly. Oftentimes, I held, and if you miss the spot, the kick is off because of that spot. But you go right back to this drive. It was all McFadden throwing it, running it, and sticking it in the end zone. Six up in Arkansas. Darren McFadden is playing before the home folks, literally. He grew up here in Little Rock, and he gets the touchdown on the one-yard run, the key play, the opening play of the drive. Yeah, yeah that's one of them. How about the pass to the <laughs> old quarterback? <laughs> you, don't, you just don't see this very often. A quarterback at wide receiver, a running back throwing passes. What a well-designed offense. Brian Vavra is the kicker for Arkansas. Sends this one over the head of Trendon Holiday. And he thought about bringing it out. An early set showing the wisdom of the ages. Said, uh-uh. Jamarcus Russell is the quarterback for the LSU offense. Having a wonderful season. He's a junior, 6'6". Six, six. Take your guess at his yeah, weight. Yeah, go ahead, guess. Depends what weight class he's in this week. Yeah, up front, Black, Johnson, Helms. And Ark Kansan, Brian Johnson, the tight end is uh, Dixon. Davis, one of the wideouts with Bo. Keelan Williams, a freshman, is the starter in the backfield, wearing number five. He missed last week's game with an injury. Double tight end set. Here's Keelan Williams, three yards out to the 23-yard line. Defensively for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Up front, Anderson, Mitchell, Jackson, Antoine Robinson. That's Keith Jackson. Olajibutu, Weston Dacus, and uh, Desmond Sims are the linebackers. Matt Hewitt injured. Chris Houston making a bid for all conference. Had his first two interceptions of his career last week. Houston Nutt in his ninth season as head coach. Matt Hewitt, who was injured, listed as injured. There he is. Is on the field. Yes, indeed. There's a stumble at the snap, and Russell just did get rid of it. Puts it in the hands of Keelan Williams. I think he got stepped on probably by his left guard on the play. You got big feet. When you're 6'6", six, six, you probably got size 16 feet. That was supposed to be a handoff, and he pitches it out and, uh, and, and gets it, uh, fortunately, to his running back. Loss of one, third and eight. 
How about Beckwith wasn't supposed to play? He's out there. Hewitt wasn't supposed to play. He's out there. I think they're playing for something, don't you? I get that idea. Justin Vincent, the senior, is in the backfield with Jacob Hester. That's Dwayne Bow. He's going to be shadowed by Chris Houston. Blitz got him. They flew through and Russell's down at the 10. Randy Kelly, the strong safety. Well, Doucette and Bo ran into each other. There was nowhere for Jamarcus Russell to throw the football. They kind of had a, a motion to the wide receivers, but watch these two guys, a little motion here. They're going to run into each other. All out blitz inside. Everybody's coming. Now watch this. Watch the two receivers for LSU. They get jammed and oh, there's nothing to happen. Bo was not able to do it. You're going to take a sack. Technical call. Blah, blah, blah. That's a technical. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's that's a Purdue yes, engineering exactly. language. Chris Jackson with the punt, and it bounces at the 45. Out of bounds. Reggie Fish is back to return it. It results in a 51-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Well, Arkansas is known for man man-to-man -man coverage. They're right up in the face of these guys. Good receivers, but good DBs. The tools for success. Well, I'm sure the Home Depot has it. You go there and you shop. From now on, you just ask for the McFadden, okay? It's one of those tools that can do everything. It's got the, like the Swiss Army knife. It can run, it can catch passes, it can throw. When you got one of these tools, like an infomercial tool, you only need one tool in the toolbox. That's what Arkansas did on the free. Just use the one tool. There's going to be a rush on Home Depot. Home Depot. Now. Just give me the McFadden. The guys, you come in say. in Wyoming and say, listen, I need a McFadden. The Swiss, the Swiss Army McFadden. <laughs> Darren McFadden, the sophomore, he's a uh, semifinalist for the Doak Walker Award. That was announced earlier this week, along with Mike Hart of Michigan and Steve Slayton of West Virginia. The Walker Award, outstanding running back, to be given in February in Dallas. McFadden and Fair Jackson in the backfield. And here is McFadden going left, gets a good block out of the corner. From Jeremy Harrell, or rather uh, Robert Felton. Well, McFadden chasing the single season rushing record here. Madre Hill holds that mark with 1,387 yards in 12 games, and McFadden came in with 1,308. This is a, a guy that a lot of the experts thought maybe should redshirt this year because he had that injured toe. That so, might not have been a good strategy. Nah. Suffered that uh, dislocated toe in July. Here's Casey Dick. Man coverage deep left side. It's oh, dropped. Damian Williams thought for a moment he had it. Jesse Daniels was defending. We had a matchup to the outside. I think it was Sheba's Jackson, number 21, yes. to the outside the corner. Williams had it one on one to the outside, and Jackson did, hasn't been an emergency, emerging corner, excuse me, for LSU. I, I talked to Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinator. I says, which one of these guys do you like man-to-man -man on Monk? He says, I'm comfortable with either one of them, Zenon or Jackson. Third down, six. Fake the reverse, lots of time. Monk gets a little behind him. Yes, it was. So it'll be fourth down. And we go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Vern, good news for Oklahoma fans. Texas A&M Stephen McGee puts his team ahead on a seven-yard run. They tried for two and failed. It's 12 to seven with two and a half left. Texas needs to win to wrap up the Big 12 South. Vern. Oh, boy, Dennis Franchoni needs to win yeah. to get the buzzards away. <laughs> They have them in Texas. Oh, they're circling there. It's, <laughs> they're two places, Alabama and Texas. Right now. Yeah. Flying lower. That's a big game for AM. Fourth down. Craig Davis. Wonderful. He is the deep man. Makes the catch, hit, avoids the tackle, has some room. Out to the 30 yard line. Kevin Woods makes the tackle a 49-yard punt by Skinner. And 18 on the return. Well, Arkansas has a tool named McFadden. He's been pretty effective. Ralphie, what would you like this year? I want a Motorola C139 with texting games and graphics. No, you'll run the bill up. It was the classic parent cell phone block. You'll run the bill. 
My only hope was to go straight to the source and ask him myself. I want to see one thirty nine with texting games and graphics. You'll run the bill up, kid. Ho, ho, no. And they heard of GoPhone from Singular, where you can pick your plan or pay as you go with no surprise bills, solving the parent kid's cell phone conundrum. Whoa. Singular, raising the bar. Was the night before Christmas, and Mom didn't know that Dad's right behind her with a box and a bow. This Christmas, tell her she's the greatest chapter in your life story with a gift from K Jewelers Three Stone Diamond Collection. And you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love it. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight. Mary I'll always remember how I feel tonight. Every kiss begins with K. What up, New York? <gasps> I have to ask, there's a story here. <laughs> Please. Wayne Brady guest on the new How I Met Your Mother, CBS Monday. The NFL regional action this Sunday on CBS. Lead game Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Late game Oakland at San Diego. The NFL on CBS begins with JB and the guys at 12 noon Eastern time this Sunday on CBS. First down and 10, second possession for LSU. They trail by six. Jamarcus Russell, here's the blitz threatened, and it's coming. Russell fires it as he can do, and that's a first down out to the 43-yard line, Dwayne Bow, 56th catch of the season for Bow. Well, we got two uh, real nice contrasts at coach here. Les Miles walks into the middle of this uh, successful LSU program. All he does is uh, potentially go back-to-back -back seasons of 10 wins. And uh, I think he's won over a lot of people with that win at Tennessee. I, I really yeah. do. And then Houston Nutt, look what he's done with this football team from the beginning at USC till now. Bo in motion followed by Houston. Here's Demarcus Russell in the face of a rush. Gets rid of it. It's caught by Hester, but a minimal gain to the 43-yard line. Elijah Butu that time was in there, and uh, that's what... Uh, this defense for Arkansas likes to do. They're going to play man-man coverage back there. They're going to rush the quarterback with uh, different people all the time. Linebackers, safeties. Of course, those two great defensive ends. Play man and say, are you good enough to beat us? Because we're going to be near our guy all day. High formation. Reggie Herring, defensive coordinator. Second season at Arkansas. Blitz again. They beat it by the toss. And here goes Keelan Williams. Boy, they got everybody coming in, and they went wide left. Gain of 16. I'll tell you, Dwayne Bowe catches a lot of passes, but if you talk to the coaches, they rave about his blocking like Michael Clayton for this team a couple years ago. Dwayne Bowe, watch him in the slot right here. Watch him take his own man, bump and run, run him off, and then look for the free safety. Boom, he takes two people, his own guy off, and cleans up on the free safety. That's one of the dangers of man-to-man -man coverage. You can do that with good blocking wide receivers. LSU across the 51st time. They blitz again, flip right side. Keelan Williams nailed for a substantial loss back to the 46-yard line. Elijah, Elijah Butu again. Yep. This guy's got a, supposedly a bad knee, right, Vern? I mean, he, he's kind of not even full speed this year, but he runs down this one. Again, not a lot of zone. He's got a man-to-man, -man and he doesn't miss. One of the great open field tacklers in the country. Came in with 93 tackles to lead this Arkansas team. Strong candidate, I would think, for all SEC honors in this, this final year. Williams is the only running back. Jamarcus Russell has called timeout. Stops the clock with six minutes and 18 seconds. Houston Nutt, ninth season here. 20 and one overall in War Memorial Stadium. Toyota presents 
Heroes of the Fall. In 2002, I was a quarterback for University of Arkansas, and we played LSU for the chance to go to the SEC championship game. Defense played great in the fourth quarter, and uh, I think it was like a fourth down, and uh, saving, uh, they, they kicked the field goal, and uh, we had like 19 seconds left, and uh, we were able to go down and score, hit Richard Smith for like a 50-yard gain, and then two plays later, hit the Corey Birmingham in the end zone. We still had to kick the extra point, we got a penalty, and had to kick it uh, 15 yards farther back, so we were kind of nervous about that, but luckily it went through. Toyota, moving forward. There she goes, one that got away. Do you see the way she was looking at me? You're not gonna believe this one. Let me take you back to what happened. Why do I care? I mean, he's a loser. I, I can't believe I won. I can't believe it. I didn't mean to spill coffee, it was hot. How could I blow that? It was never, never, never enough. Yeah! I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, I'm not mad at you. Thank you. I'm starving. You wanna go, like, get, like, some Chinese or something like that? You love our burgers, and that's just the beginning. Introducing our premium age prime sirloin, cut from the best of the best beef. Prime is what a steak lover lives for. Almost too tender for a knife, too juicy for words. And try our new fresh jumbo lump crab cake. All jumbo lump meat, nearly no cake. Uncompromising quality, incredible freshness. Yours always, Ruby Tuesday. Arkansas coach Houston Nutt grew up in Little Rock. His dad was a coach about a mile down the road at the Arkansas School for the Deaf. Houston Nutt Sr. spent 35 years there coaching basketball and as the athletic director. He passed away last spring in April. He was 74 years of age. As a four-year-old, Houston told us two days ago his dad took him to his first college game ever in the left end zones here at War Memorial Stadium. Second down, 16. Russell, Bow, nice gain to the 35-yard line. Pretty tough. I'll tell you, a great matchup. Two future NFL players, Dwayne Bow, Chris Houston, come off. Bow is so physical. The slants, remember the slants. By the way, there's a flag on this play. It's going to ah. come back. The slants that Steve Spurrier used against this Arkansas team in the second half, that looks like what LSU is going to go with. That flag was thrown all the way back at the 45 of LSU. Here's Rocky Good, the man who threw it. Holden, offense, number 70. He'll be 10 yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Wipes out an 11-yard game. And for Les Miles, a very difficult week. He, of course, played his collegiate ball at Michigan. His whole country was saddened by the death of Bo Schembechler last Friday, and Les was back for the funeral service on Monday. Second down. Jacob Hester behind Jamarcus Russell. They hand it to Hester. Another flag thrown. On the far side, Hester moves the pile all the way out to the 50. So we'll unsort, or we'll sort this one. We won't unsort it. Offsides, defense, number 90. Penalties five yards, repeat, or down. Ernest Mitchell. Well, you mentioned a while ago, yeah, Chris Houston has a future. Talking football. about him, you said he had his first two interceptions. And uh, look who he's been matched up with all year. The uh, who's who of wide receivers, Sidney Rice, right down here. Remember, those are the slants and fades that Spurrier used against Arkansas in the second half. Forced Reggie Herring into something he doesn't like to do, calling a zone defense. It worked. They intercepted one late to win the ball game. Second and 21 here. A blitz coming inside pattern by Dwayne Bowe. He's got some speed. Oh, Bounces oh. off a tackle. How about that? That was Weston Dacus, a linebacker, 
who went backwards. Yeah, that was the middle linebacker. We said he was physical. What do we always say is LSU's favorite play? When they need a money play, what do they go to? The wide receiver screen. We saw it against Tennessee. We saw it against Florida. You see, oh, to Wayne Boat takes on a middle linebacker and puts him on his back. That is pretty. That is uplifting to your team to watch your wide receivers block and be physical like that. But it's also uplifting to the linebacker. Yeah, that's for sure. First down and 10, the 23-yard gain. Draw play. Keelan Williams gets a block, and he strolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Louisiana State. 29-yard gain. Talk about gashing them. You talk about gashing them. That is a well blocked play. And Mr. Bo got another little nip on the safety. Didn't knock him down, but just enough. Keelan Williams, the freshman, did not play last week in the home game against Ole Miss. Won by LSU in overtime. Here's Colt David out of Matt Flynn's hold. And because of the missed extra point on the Arkansas touchdown, Les Miles' team goes six plays, 70 yards, gets the touchdown run and the extra point. Sure does, and it was a little bit of pass, but a lot of physical play, and that was right, stuck right in there. At CompUSA, we get megapixels and megabytes. We get that airport gates don't have nearly enough outlets for charging that big games play better on big screens, and that the new four and a half inch Sony VAIO Micro PC with Intel Core Solo Processor, XP Pro, and touchscreen puts the power of a PC in the palm of your hand. So get yours now at CompUSA. We got it, we get it. Every day, Progressive does something that's, well, progressive. They have this ticker that shows their car insurance rates and their top competitors. Right now on Progressive.com, you can see actual rates that people are getting. Sometimes Progressive is the lowest. Sometimes they're not. Hey, if they're this helpful when you're shopping for car insurance, imagine how they'll be once you're a customer. It's the smoking hot girlfriend versus the no-nonsense maid. She's kind of like family. She's rude, offensive, and vulgar. Okay, exactly like family. A new Two and a Half Men, Monday. And now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. And here's the Gary. First of all, interesting formation, the tight end. That means Jamal Anderson way outside. Now watch. The play behind the play takes his man and just a nip outside there. When you play in man coverage, the wide receiver, Dwayne Bowe, takes one guy and then gets into the safety right there, and that creates that gash. Could not get inside. Randy Kelly could not fill it and make the play. Big guy, big receiver, doing a lot of big things from a catch to a block. Dwayne Bowe showing why he is so valuable in this offense. And Keelan Williams gets the touchdown, the true freshman. And Chris Jackson will kick off now for LSU. He'll kick it deep to either Felix Jones or Darren McFadden, and they both have touchdown returns from kickoffs this season. McFadden's last week, 92 yards. And this one will not be returned. Through the end zone and back out to the 20. So the difference in the ball game, the extra point missed by the Razorbacks, converted by Colt David and Dwayne Bowe with a big first quarter. Yeah, you remember now that that pickup and those points came after a big penalty that moved LSU back into tough field position and, and long yardage to pick up a first down. They did it with that wide receiver screen, then they gashed him with the run. That was a 23-yard gain from Jamarcus Russell to Bowe. Now, late substitution, Luke Sanders is out defensively. There's the handoff, and he slips at the line of scrimmage, McFadden. So it'll be second down and 10. They might give him a yard. One yard. Now, um, 
All our Florida fans, they, maybe they should just hold their ears closed just okay. a little bit, okay? All just right. a minute. Right. Okay. I think these two teams are probably playing the best football right now in the SEC. Now think about that. Florida is a top five team, and these two teams might be playing the best football in the conference. That's how tough this conference is. Arkansas with the one defeat. Here's Casey Dick. Fires it out to Jackson. And uh, at the 22-yard line, well, let's check in with Tracy. But this report on Reggie Herring. That's right, guys. It's not surprising. Defensive coordinator Reggie Herring was not happy after that LSU touchdown. Herring went to Matt Hewitt, said, who blocked you? Went to Weston Dacus, who blocked you? Sam Elajabutu, who blocked you? Randy Kelly, who blocked you? He said, come on, guys, make a play. He was not a happy camper, guys. <laughs> uh, he is not shy about expressing no, his no. opinions either, is he? Here's Reggie Fish. They fake it to him. Casey Dick in trouble. Got him. Allie Highsmith up high. Number seven. And Tyson Jackson down low to begin the defensive play. And uh, obvious approval from the faithful from Baton Rouge. LSU is a great open field tackling team. As good as you'll find in college football. They've got great athletes at every level. Defensive line, linebacker, corners and safeties. And that's why they really run to space and tackle well. Jacob Skinner on to punt with that uh, by now familiar pre-punt routine. Buster Davis waits for LSU at the 45. Nice and high. Good downfield coverage. They overrun it. Fair catch is called by Davis. Good field position again off this 36-yard uh, punt. Got a sports fan in your gift list? Beat the crowds when you shop online at the CBS Sports Store. Right now, all officially licensed NFL apparel is 20% off. Log on today and save big at cbssportsstore.com. Overhead view of War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. This facility built, dedicated in 1948. First down and 10. Justin Vincent's in the game now at tailback. Senior. Handoff. Vincent. Ankle tackled by Dacus. Weston Dacus. Number 30. Well, this LSU road uh, schedule this year has been quite interesting, hasn't it? How about this? Four road games, and look at what they faced. I mean, these were, at the time they played Auburn, I mean, Auburn's thinking national championship. Florida's still thinking national championship. Tennessee would be in the hunt had they lot, lot, lost Ainge, and now, right now, Arkansas believes they're in the hunt. Uh, what a road schedule. First time LSU has faced four top 10 teams on the road in a single year. Play fake, Russell in trouble, got rid of it. Dwayne Bowe chased by Vanette and tackled by Darius Vanette. He did a good job because he was fooled on the play. Yeah. See, that's where that size of Jamarcus Russell is just so valuable. Six foot six, he's got Jamal Anderson, a six foot six, 280 pound player coming at him. Uh, the guy in white is the quarterback, the six foot six guy. The other guy's six foot six in the red, and he just throws it right over the top of him. That's why his size, that's where the size really matters. Bo already with three catches for 37 yards. Will Reggie go man-to-man -man again? Blitz threatened. Oh, yeah. Blitz coming. Russell comes out, lobs it out, caught by Buster Davis. That's close enough, I think. Well, no. Here's the left-footed spot at the 42. That yeah, might not be enough. I think it's going to be just short. Interesting decision now for Les Miles. Got a physical football team he sold his team and his offensive lineman that we play physical football should we kick it or should we go for it right here you could do one of those gimmick plays where you try to draw them off because if you kick from the 40 or the 47 it doesn't really you know matter here. right well let's see Jackson's coming on they're hurrying on. It's fourth and about two feet. Now, we've seen a fake before from LSU. Remember the Tennessee game? Absolutely. Well, they snap it back to Chris Jackson. 
nice and high and heads inside the 10 and takes a quick hard bounce LSU had three guys perfectly positioned uh, Houston nut has the gods going his way again remember Vanderbilt when that puff of wind came Jonathan Zena Jonathan Zena number 19 you got to look up look up for the ball did it too late oh there it goes that should have been downed inside the five it comes out to the 20 instead with nine seconds eight seconds this will be the last few seconds of the first quarter quickly played yeah those three and outs that's what Bo Pelini and this LSU defense go for three and outs that's the end of one in Little Rock LSU leading seven to six and will return to War Memorial Stadium after this message and a word from your local station Tell you this, pal, the Fritos chili cheese wrap is a full meal. Totally, yeah. All wrapped up and they get the Fritos, the chili, that cheese. It's a hearty, hearty thing, man. Yeah. It's a full meal and a tortilla. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. I couldn't really? Ask. Yeah. Call cool, I'm going to have your tots then. Is that cool? What? No, it's... Ah! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're coming back down to earth there, Screamy. Ah! Fritos chili cheese wrap. Only at Sonic. Fritos corn chips with chili and cheese and a side of tots, just $2.99. Give a reloadable My Sonic card today. It's not just good. It's Sonic good. Alone, lying, thinking last night. How to find my soul a home. I came up with one thing, and I don't believe I'm wrong. That nobody, but nobody, can make it out here alone. You'll never be alone with the AIG companies by your side. AIG, the strength to be there. Don't miss numbers, CBS Tonight. Okay. Next up, Gene Wiseman. Oh, yeah. I taught her that move. Homegirl can dance, man. Learn the moves from Happy Feet. Get dance lessons, songs, and more. Exclusively on demand with Comcast Digital Cable. It's Comcast. -ic. Catch Happy Feet in theaters November 17th. This holiday season, leave the perfect hint for your wish list. Dreams come true during the Lincoln Mercury Wish List event. Featuring the redesigned 2007 Lincoln Navigator. The SUV that started it all is once again making its presence known. Bring home the original, starting at this great price. Find the ultimate holiday gift during the Lincoln Mercury Wish List event. Did you know that Bell South has a choice of speeds with fast access DSL? So there's really no reason. There's to... really no reason to stick with dial up. If you just like to surf like me. Or us, we just want a faster internet. At a price you can afford. Fast access DSL starts at uh... $24.95 a month. And that's not an introductory price. I have all the speed I need. I have all the speed I need. There's just no reason not to get fast access DSL. Right? Right. You got that right. Dogs Tech, then post game, Saturday starting at 3.30 on CBS 46. We welcome you back to War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas. Arkansas and the Tigers of LSU, Darren McFadden with the touchdown for the Razorbacks. It's seven to six. As we begin the second, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson on this absolutely gorgeous day after Thanksgiving. First down and 10, McFadden will open up in the Wildcat formation at the quarterback spot. That's Felix Jones in motion. Hand off to Jones, breaks the tackle, goes right, and is hauled down. Well, let's take a look at the current BCS standings Ohio State Michigan Southern Cal Florida Notre Dame and then there is Arkansas now one of the benefits of being a senior guy here <laughs> I get to ask and you're expected to answer all ah, right let's assume Southern Cal wins out over right. Notre Dame 
are they then in the championship? I think they'll be in the championship. Okay. Uh, I, listen, I've got a, I was upset a few years ago when uh, Nebraska made it because they were a second place team. I have to be honest and stay with my convictions. Second place teams should not go. And of course, Southern Cal has the Notre Dame game tomorrow night in UCLA. Arkansas has a dream alive. Their best hope now, of course, is a, a Southern Cal loss. They must win here. Then they must win against Florida. And I still think, candidly, it's a long shot for the Razorbacks. Uh, I do too. But, you know, they I, as long as they can keep playing towards that goal, you know, that, I think that keeps them fired up. Sure. I mean, that, that's good for this program to, to do that. And, and in this conference, Second down and 12, Casey Dick at quarterback. Hands it off to McFadden. Bounces it to the outside. Dick with a little roll right block. That, that one right there. Yeah, how about Chavis Jackson? Open field tackling. That's what this LSU team does as well as any team in the country. Now, you can talk about the BCS championship. No matter who play Arkansas plays from here on in, they're not going to play anybody better. I promise you better than the talent they're facing today for LSU. This is as good a talented team. You know, a tough, couple tough losses on the road for LSU. It happens. You play those teams on the road. Well, they had a first down and goal at the one at Florida. Jamarcus Russell fumbled on that play after a very controversial replay ruling. Here's Dick almost picked off. Jesse Daniels had both hands on it. Couldn't keep them on it. It'll be fourth down. So after that opening drive, this uh, number one defense in the country, LSU, has handled Arkansas. And that time it was a zone, kind of a robber defense. Jesse Daniels moved into the center of the field and looked for the crossing route and read it coming all the way. Two safeties were lined up pre-snap, and then Jesse Daniels ran into the middle and waited for a crossing route. That's good coaching. They anticipated that play. Two three and outs for Arkansas now. Jacob Skinner, whoa! A flag thrown on the near side. We had a little activity. I think it was John Johnson. Yeah, it was. Ball start. Number 20 on the kicking team. Penalty's five yards. Still fourth down. Let me just finish my thought on that BCS here for a second, Vern. You know, I, the, this system lost me when they let the computers decide over my the, everyone's eyes when USC didn't go for the championship. Computers are not built to decide these types of things. Here's the punt by Skinner, very low. Davis will let it bounce. John Johnson is down there. Well, you had an analogy about computers trying to judge literature. Yeah. Right? I said, uh, show me a computer that can tell me the difference of who's better. Mark Twain or Shakespeare? That's the computer I'd like to decide who's the champion, if you could find one of those. 7-6 LSU. Jamarcus Russell started out 6-4-6. Six six. His team has a one-point lead. Oh, you're home early. What's the point? Everyone's giving all those great gifts from Home Depot this year. <sighs> oh, where's the remote? This year, the Home Depot is the place for great gifts, like a Ryobi One Plus drill and circular saw combo for $49, or a rigid 12-gallon wet dry vac. It's just $27 at the Home Depot. Only one in four people are very confident they have saved enough for retirement. Who can help you feel more confident about your future? The Hartford. Prepare to live your future the way you've always seen it. See your advisor about the latest products and solutions from The Hartford. Because you're not preparing to retire, you're preparing to live. The Hartford. Prepare to live. A memory. The results could change her life. It makes it easier to remember and function. It's a story you won't forget. Sunday on 60 Minutes. Tim Brando in New York. Colt McCoy, the quarterback for Texas, was knocked out, carted off the field with 20 seconds left in the game. And Jevin Sneed throws this pick to Japheth Brown to seal the first win for Dennis Franchoni against either Texas, OU, or Nebraska while at Texas A&M. Now Oklahoma must beat Oklahoma State tomorrow to capture the Big 12 South. Let's get back to Vernon, Gary, and Little Rock. 
Oh, thank you. That shakes up a few bowl assignments, doesn't it? First down and 10. Jamarcus Russell out of the shotgun. Defensive stunts by Arkansas. He fires it out for Trendon Holiday, number eight. And it's incomplete. And it's time now for the walking duck. Come on across. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> duck on duck. Oh, my goodness. It's Mallards. What is the lasting... <laughs> <laughs> the lasting legacy that the city of Little Rock provided to the LSU football program. Guess where we stayed last night? That's it. <laughs> right where we stayed. The... Hey, look, that's, that's how we waddled out of uh, Thanksgiving dinner last <laughs> night, didn't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, how great. Second down and 10. Brett Helms over the ball. Blitz coming. Russell gets rid of it. Buster Davis underneath. Slips a tackle. Big game. Across the 50 and out of bounds at the 45. That is a pickup of 20. Man, I tell you, when you're playing inside technique, press coverage, you cannot let somebody get inside this easy. That's just embarrassing for Richardson. That's embarrassing to have someone just abuse you to the outside like that. You're, you have potential to be taken off the field after a play like that. You can't play man-to-man -man and have receivers do that to you. It's a pickup of 20. Can't Jamarcus play that Russell. defense. Can't play it. And a first down 10 at the 44 officially. Draw play. They test the middle. Keelan Williams. Interesting, uh, Les Miles and Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, Gary, they've used five and six running backs right. per game, but they recently seem to have settled on Keelan Williams as the go-to guy. Yeah, he looks like he's the guy that they, they most trust. We did that Tennessee game, and late in the game, they played, what, six different running backs in yes. that game? Yes. But when money was on the line, Keelan Williams is the guy that Les Miles went to, so you, you knew he believed him. Now, the other guy, Jacob Hester, is the guy he always trusts in the football game. And so he is in there now on second down and seven. Razorbacks bring four. Oh, they got him second time. Russell sacked. That's Jamal Anderson's 11th sack of the season. This is really an interesting football player, Jamal Anderson. He was a high school wide receiver. He broke the passing records of Keith Jackson. He comes to the outside a little stunt and goes inside that time to kind of beat the protection, kind of the protection scheme that time. He has gained 65 pounds since he's come to college. 11th of the year. He had three of them in the big win against Tennessee in Fayetteville. He's confused. Jamal Anderson is right there on what to do on this play. Blitz. Russell deep. Man coverage. Man open. Buster Davis still on his feet. Looks for a block. Heads for the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Forty-seven yards. Uh, it's called a stutter and go. And if you got a guy you think you can beat short, Material Richardson, you go with him long. And Buster Davis just put a schooling on Richardson. See, that's the problem playing man to man. If you got a guy who's a sucker out there, he's going to get the ball. Colt David on for the extra point. Matt Flynn, the backup quarterback, will hold it. And David hammers it home for the second time. Craig Davis, the senior, watch this stutter and go. Stop and go. And what another nice play. Richardson doesn't know where the ball is. Ball's underthrown. Craig Davis does. And then Craig Davis, just a very good athlete in space. That's these LSU players when they get the ball in space. They're as good as there is in the country. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. Is he looking to build you out of big money? Be on the alert for the crooked contract. Plus, tonight's top stories and tomorrow's forecast all in the first five minutes. Monday on CBS 46 News at 11. So what's the deal? Oh, Comcast put internet, phone, and cable together in one package for just $33 each per month, and it's all on one bill. No, what's the deal with us making it to the finals? <laughs> Come
Comcast Triple Play. Internet, phone, and cable. Together for just $33 each per month when you subscribe to all three. It's Comcastic. <sighs> It's that magical time of year. Get a special lease offer on a C230 sports sedan with a powerful 2.5-liter V6 at the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event, now through January 2nd. There's never been a better time to get that Mercedes-Benz on your wish list. Local coverage is brought to you by BrandSmart USA. Tonight on CBS, murder and a CIA conspiracy, plus a shocking announcement. It all adds up to a new numbers tonight at 10, 9 central, only on CBS. And for Jamarcus Russell, some rather nice numbers. Yeah, I would say so. Eight for nine in this football game. I mean, he has uh, showed, you know, he's been under a little bit of pressure, but uh, look what he's done. And big plays, too. Yeah. You know, second and 26, third and 13. That's why uh, when he's hitting those balls, this offense, now that they're running the ball, they're second in this conference in rushing LSU. That's how dangerous this offense is. LSU is going with the senior Ryan Gaudet to kick off. Very short. They Pooch may not this go is back. This is dangerous. Yeah. This is dangerous. Oh, great boy. Yes, indeed. Felix Jones made a great, great play right there. The upbacks didn't even look for the ball. Now we know why they went with the uh, backup yes. kickoff guy. What a wonderful caller. Watch Felix Jones come up. Wow. That could have been, obviously it was a free ball, but uh, backup kicker. Backup type of strategy, and it almost backed up for a turnover. Yeah. One of the seniors on this LSU team. And a, a bit of pleading now from Felix Jones, young man from Tulsa. He and McFadden, great tandem of running backs, but uh, slowed now since the opening drive. First down and 10 from the 24. Reggie Fish, number seven, is in motion. <laughs> Casey Dick. Goes deep for Marcus Monk, overthrows him by six, seven yards. Well, we, we spoke about the coordinators, Reggie Heron and uh, Bo Pelini. Well, here's the offensive coordinator for Arkansas, Gus Malzahn. Just a year ago, he was a high school coach. Now, imagine the decision-making that Houston Nutt did to hire this guy, right, Vern? I mean, a high school coach. I mean, a little transparent. I mean, he wanted three of his players, right? Yeah, yep. I mean, they got him, but he's paid off for him. I mean, this is a, a unique offense, and he's doing an excellent job, I think, of running this Arkansas offense. Back in the Wildcat, which was one of his ideas, along with Danny Nutt, here's McFadden. Boy, if he gets into the open, he can stiff arm, and he's got great speed. And Jesse Daniels saved a bunch more. That's a gain of 30. This formation with two running backs on the field. Michael Smith, number 21's out there this time. Fake to him, and now you've got, you know, a big league runner coming at you. You don't even have to block, you don't even have to block outside. Reggie Fish gets a nice block to the outside. Number seven, Monk gets a nice block to the outside, and then Big 501. You know, you know why they call him 501, don't you? That's the area code. He's got a tattooed right on his arm. Big 501 gives him the straight arm. Number one, uh, the first down. <laughs> caught up in the numbers. <laughs> That's Felix Jones, number 25. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking back to Reggie Bush yep. who started that whole thing. Well, we, it's been a lot. Of, we talked about Gus Melzahn and the trickery, I guess you'd call it, the Wildcat formation. There's been a little bit of that all year for Arkansas. Well, they, they, they worked on this in the spring, this Wildcat formation. And Houston Nutt's brother, one of his three brothers, Danny Nutt, the running back coach, also given credit for coming up for it. Here it is again. This time, Felix Jones gets around the corner. Gets a block for Monk. There's a flag down. The touchdown, I think, is going to be brought back. Yeah, this is a silly penalty late by Stephen Parker. Number 74. 
There's no way Highsmith, Alonzo Highsmith, could have made this tackle. Ellie Highsmith could have made this tackle, and Parker gets a late clip on the play. Doing the run, clip, number 74, offense. Penalties 15 yards from the spot of the foul to the second down. Now watch where Highsmith is and Parker is. There's no way, there's no way Highsmith is going to catch and then watch Parker. He's going to get Alonzo, uh, Ali Highsmith in the ankles right there. There's no way Highsmith's going to get it. And there's the clip from behind right there. That's an easy call. Sure it is. <laughs> he was by that man by six yards. It was an unnecessary block, and that was a good call, Houston. That was a good call. What could not be arguing? No, I, that's huh? home. You try to get the crowd, and you're working on the next one, I guess. Okay. Wipes out a 39-yard touchdown. Casey Dick, deep for McFadden. Man for man. Flag is down on Chevis Jackson, I believe. Yep. This is not a spot foul in college football. They got three flags. We've got a plethora of handkerchiefs. I, I want you football fans to think about this. This is a running back going against a skilled corner, okay, running a stutter pass, and look at his ball skills are. This is McFadden. He went into motion. This is a skilled corner to the outside. Chevis Jackson, now watch the stutter. Pass interference. Goes in. Number 21, defense. The penalty's 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That would have been caught had that not been inter interference by Jackson. Look at the ball skills for this guy. Reminiscent of another number five, only this guy's about 20 pounds bigger and three inches taller. That your turn, the bush, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That was clearly. Les Miles can't even argue with that one. The other five is Reggie. Yep. Of course. Now, they've got the uh, Wildcat formation this time. Nothing doing. Well, we talked about the trick plays that Arkansas has used this year. We saw it early against Alabama, the swinging gate. This was the one where Houston Nutt tried to ice the game. Then the Woody play against Auburn, handed off to Reggie Fish, and he goes around to one side. And then the reverse pass against Mississippi State where four key players touch the ball and Monk ends up with trick plays by Houston Nutt. Second down and nine now. Here's Dick. The handoff goes to Felix Jones. To the 30-yard line, it will be third and a short one, possibly two. Chase Pittman makes the tackle. The gain is a seven. Now McFadden and Felix Jones Listed as the second most productive running duo. They are the uh, most productive running backs right. because the West Virginia tandem includes a quarterback. Yeah, well, we're, he's starting to be a quarterback too. Yeah, that's right. right. Here he is at quarterback again. Timeout. Boy, is he comfortable back there? That yeah. did not go well. You know, it, it just didn't feel well. The motion didn't go right. He just took a nice, calm timeout. 14-6, time call. Stop. Back up. Turn right. Turn right. Straight ahead. Turn left at intersection. Destination ahead. Navigate your holidays. Now, for a limited time, buy or lease a specially equipped Cadillac, and we'll pay for the navigation system. Season's best from Cadillac. Two dark hippos. Bill and Stout. Give me a Blutenberg dark. Negro Modelo, please. Finally, an imported dark beer that doesn't behave like one. Classically smooth, never bitter, Negra Modelo. As you near retirement, we understand how financial priorities may change. We're TIAA-CREF. 
With our range of income choices, protection strategies, and personalized objective advice, we have the expertise to guide you through the complexities of living in retirement so we can help you spend yours the way you want. TIAA CREF, financial services for the greater good. Murder. Mind control. Sensory deprivation. Chemical treatments. A CIA conspiracy. You thinking what I'm thinking? I hope not. Number CBS Tonight. Back in Little Rock, and time now for the answer to the, here comes the duck, trivia question. What is the lasting legacy the city of Little Rock provided to the LSU football program? Well, you see War Memorial Stadium, and just to the left is the Little Rock Zoo in 1936. The LSU student body raised $750 to purchase a Bengal tiger named Sheik from the Little Rock Zoo. The tiger was renamed Mike to honor the LSU athletic trainer of that era, Mike Chambers. And uh, just a little footnote, Mike Chambers played football with Red Grange at huh. Illinois. Ties it all together, right? Of course it does. Yeah, the tiger. If we try and yep. connect it all, it, you know, we'll stitch it. I would imagine Houston Nuts' dad took him to that zoo several times when he was growing up here. Third down. This has been the changeup with this formation. Arkansas is using an unbalanced line in the Wildcat this game. First time they've showed that. Mike Smith is the motion guy. McFadden has it. Comes left. Watch the stiff arm. Oh, boy. There it was on Derry Beckwith. That's a first down, Arkansas. Just a little different look for LSU. You don't want your defensive players to get real comfortable. Give them something to think about. This time you fake the wide handoff to Smith. Power inside. Great block up front by that very physical offensive line for Arkansas. Robert Felton, number 61, just got a pancake. Now here are the numbers in that Wildcat formation. This is Casey Dick in the end zone. Incidental contact. Jonathan Zenon, as Mark as Monk was the intended receiver. This was a quick huddle. It was kind of a little trick play again. They go run up to the huddle and they snap it quick. They got one on one and they just go for it. This was going to go to Monk all the way. One on one. Throw it up there. Jump ball. Zenon nudges him and that could have been called. I'm telling you, that could have been called. This time I agreed with all the groaning. On second down. They hand it off to Felix Jones to the 21-yard line. Charles Alexander makes the tackle. So uh, reverberation of booze after the no call on Zenon. It's, it's funny. You talk to the coordinators, and Vern and I talked to Bo Pelini by phone one of the two days, and uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, and Bo Pelini said the quick motions should not affect us. Our players shouldn't even look at it. It's affected them. You know, you can talk about things on the blackboard, but when it gets on the field, it's different. Now, LSU looks like they might be sending six or seven. Casey Dick, five yards back. Comes the blitz. Dick. Oh. Behind Monk, who wow. makes the grab. Wow. Nifty catch. How about that? Wow. Marcus Monk, touchdown. Fought his way into the end zone. This play was called from the press box. Casey Dick faked the snap. He looked over, saw there was no safety man to man, and they called this audible a quick out to Monk. Wasn't executed great by the quarterback, but boy, was it nice by Monk. That's his 23rd of his career. It equals the school record. He now shares it with Anthony Lucas. 23 touchdowns for Marcus Monk, who is in his junior year. Watch they will this. go right for the two. Flat. There's the lob in the corner. Yeah. Maybe too much. Yes. Same play they used against Alabama. Quick huddle, go to the flat with their tailback, and uh, that was seen by the coaches also from LSU where they were ready. Now you look. Called from the sideline. Anybody can see this. You're up in the box. There's nobody back here. You know it's man-to-man. -man. You know LSU's coming. The call is right here. Let's get away from it. Safe play. Look, see how he looks back. The call is made right down here. Says, okay, let's snap it. Give it to Monk real quickly. And we know we're at least not going to get sacked. Get it out there. Not a very good throw. Great catch. And, uh-oh, what happened to that great tackling? 
I'll tell you, Jonathan Zenon went to steal the ball and he didn't make the tackle. Watch Zenon. Tried to steal the ball and Monk says, I'm going to steal six points. Brian Vavra, whoa, boomed it. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Somebody snuck a little helium in the ball. Let's, let's peek away at this one a little bit more, uh, just to, just how this play involved. Here's LaRon Landry right here. Tyson Jackson's going to drop out. There's the quick out to Marcus Monk. Watch this. Landry comes. Tyson Jackson, the defensive end, drops out. Should not be a touchdown. Three big players there. All three of them miss him. And that's what happens. You go for the football. Watch Zenon try to rip the ball right there. And Monk takes it into the end zone. 21-yard hustle play. Arkansas gets the touch. It's 14 to 12. And to Marcus Russell, brilliant stats in the first half. He's 8 of 9 for 105 yards. He'll hand it off. Pick up of 3 by Keelan William Keith Jackson, number 98. Well, look what's coming up next week. Friday night, Shizuka Arakawa, Oksana Bayul, Alexei Yagudin, all of your favorite <laughs> stars. <laughs> U.S. War Ice Wars, USA versus the world. Next Friday night, 8 o'clock, presented by Olay. Scott Hamilton and I were there in Just Hawthorne Estates. make yes? sure you get to the SEC championship game. That's all I got to say. All right. <laughs> Tracy Wolfson did the interviews. We could tell you who won, but we won't. <laughs> there it is again. Dwayne Bowe bumped into his own man yeah. and is down at the 37-yard line. There's so many different ways to attack a man-to-man -man defense. You know, you can have the running plays with the wide receivers taking your his man who covers him and block the wide uh, safety like Bo did, or this wide receiver screen. That That is a weapon. Now, remember, in college football, your offensive lineman can go downfield and block before the ball is caught. Sid Gillum told me, if he knew that he could run that play in the NFL, old Sid Gee said, I'd run it every other play. So it's almost like cheating. There's a handoff. Keelan Williams out near the 46. Sid Gilman, of course, the longtime head coach of the Chargers. Passed away a few years ago. There's Kevin Woods, the starting free safety. Woods on. They lost Michael Grant, one of their stars defensively in the South Carolina game. So they've got some aches and pains on that defensive yeah, team. Yeah, they do. Lost Freddie Fairchild, the linebacker, a starting linebacker earlier. Uh, right now, they've taken uh, Richardson out of the game. The net is in, number four down here for Richardson. He's struggling at corner. you got to make a change. Second down, one. Williams hit, driven down, but he might. And I don't, I don't think he's short of the first down. Randy Kelly makes the tackle, number six. See what kind of spot we've got here. It'll be third down. Uh, yeah, and you saw that. And I and I think Jimbo Fisher, the coordinator for LSU, saw that. And he'll file that away. A free safety making a tackle on second and short in the backfield. Don't think we won't say a play action pass in a long one. But Burns pointing to the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Even I can figure that out. <laughs> That's a quarterback sneak, and you got Jamarcus Russell at 6'6", too. Oh, a fumble! How about that? On what play? You can hardly see the ball come out. Remember yep. the big play in the Florida game, Jamarcus Russell's fumble at the one. Yep, just like that. Remember that play. Sometimes I wonder, now this is still, there's still the discussion going on in the film, in the field right here between the officials, but it's going to go to Arkansas. If being 6'6", six, six, doesn't hamper him a bit. Let's hear there's a snap. Getting the sack inside from Helms. Starts going. No, this one he clearly had. 6-6 six, six didn't hurt him here. The ball just came out. Are they looking at this? Nope. Well, you see well how they are looking yeah. at it, but it's not stopped. Arkansas is up there to try to snap it quickly right now. No, they're going to take a peek at it. Well, Zach Tubbs got into a uh, pass-blocking stance rather quickly. Here's Rocky Good. LSU would like to have the last play challenge. Now, here's the problem here. So far, what we've seen, it just looks like a mass of bodies yep, to me. Yep. It's called the fumble. We'd have to get in way, way closer than that. 
It's called the fumble. And that is key here. Is there enough to overturn the original call? Oh, yeah, he ripped it out. I, I think that was ripped out by Keith Jackson, to tell you the truth, number 99. His daddy was in the booth before number big 99. I think gets in on Jamarcus Russell. I mean, nothing you see right here. You can't, can't see it not being out, right? Nope, that looks like a rugby can't scrum. Un, can't unring the bell here. Right. And there's the ba beanbag thrown down, indicating yep. the call of yes. a fumble. Good, good spot, Fern. And Les Miles has used a timeout for his one challenge in the game. Yeah. And I don't see anything that would indicate there's uh, evidence to overturn no. the call. Unless we've got uh, one of those uh, umpire cameras in the umpire's hat. We don't have one of those. No, do we? we don't have one of those. <laughs> no. Well, yeah. Les Miles is getting an earful from Jamarcus Russell. Well, the other way around. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Usually, see, he's from the Bow School. Usually, the coach yells at the quarterback. That's where. That's the way I've experienced it my whole career, at least. Well, this is uh, as definitive as we can get. Yeah. Mass of bodies. It, it couldn't have had a better view. And the official who dropped the beanbag, indicating a fumble on the far side of the field, had, I think, by far the best view of what happened in there. Uh, we don't. Uh, there's the signal. I just can't see this one getting overturned at all. After further review, the play is called on the field stands. There's a first timeout for LSU, the second timeout of the you know, What I question, Gary, is someone in the booth looking at the play on television and telling Les Miles. Well, now, now remember, we're in, in college ball, the coaches are not allowed right, to have yeah, a, good, a, a booth camera. So good point. this was just a feel. It's a first half timeout. They're not as you know, valuable as second half timeouts. And he just, all right, let's just slow it down and just make sure it was Les's idea. I don't think that's a killer. Oh, look at that. You can see it now. The competition on the road has been a lot different as we showed a little earlier. Yeah, they haven't played Tulane on the road. Yes, it doesn't happen. First down and 10. No, no one's played a road schedule like LSU. Come on, let's be honest here. You can, uh, you, you ask Ohio State or Michigan to play LSU's road schedule. Might be a little different record. At Auburn, they lost seven to three. They had a three nothing lead in the fourth. At Florida, yep. Russell fumbled going in at the one yard line after a bad call, one that was supposed it was apologized for later. By right. the way, there's the, there's Florida. the Florida game. Yep. First and goal. Was that first and goal, by the way? I think the it was, yes. I think it was. Now we're back to live. McFadden comes left to the 47-yard line. 3.53 to go. And Arkansas has two timeouts left as the clock winds down. You know, maybe I'm just trying to read too much into this. And if it is, so be it. It just seems to me that this field is rather new, and McFadden doesn't look like he can cut, cut quite as well on this field as he can all year. He seems to be slipping a little bit to me. They'll hand it out of the Wildcat to Felix Jones. Stiff arms, Jackson. Jackson slides down and makes the tackle at the ankles. Good defensive job after the initial contact. <laughs> How about these two, McFadden yeah. and Jones? It's so nice how they get leverage to get outside so quickly. You just go, you snap it to good run, good running back. Here comes another good running back, and I can hear all the old coaches. Those guys, they're probably 65, 70 years old now that ran the wing tee. Right. And the single wing saying, I knew that offense was good. Should have <laughs> never stopped running that <laughs> offense. There's McFadden coming to the left side at the 35-yard line. Tackle made by Jason Remember, Spadoni. You get, get yourself a big running back. Yeah. Big offensive line. Snap it to him. You don't have to do all this film study and everything like that. You just I run the ball. It vividly. Do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I resent you calling 65-year-olds old. <laughs> well, you just that's wait. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Second and seven. This is reminiscent of the second quarter against Tennessee when Arkansas just featured this Wildcat formation. Now here's the reverse. Back it goes to Robert Johnson. That's tipped. And caught, but no, no, no. No, no Ben Cleveland. 
How about that one? Robert Johnson, who caught a pass on the first series, threw this one. He was the starting quarterback against Southern California. Well, give LSU credit on this one. They were ready for trick plays, and that time you had someone stay at home. Danny McRae, number 44, a freshman, by the way, and Cleveland could have caught that one. It was right there, but, you know, it's interesting. Your original starting quarterback, Robert Johnson, might be the worst thrower out of all the guys I've seen so far. That's the guy who played against USC right there. That's In a that game, it was a close game at the half. Arkansas gave it away five times. There they tried the middle on third down and get nothing. And they're well beyond the field goal range of Jeremy Davis. Well, that was a much anticipated season opener. Robert Johnson scored on a one yard run in the second quarter that cut the lead to six. But up 16 to seven to start the third, Southern Cal scored 28 straight points to put the game out of reach and win by 36. And amazingly, after that, right. they beat Utah State. They get a breath of wind that right. uh, keeps a field goal from going over at Vandy. They win in Fayetteville in overtime against Alabama, and then the big, big, big win at Auburn, 27-10. You're right. And, and and how about that Alabama game? We did that Arkansas-Alabama game and stood up in the box before that game and said, this might be a turning point for both teams. Will Alabama or Arkansas go on from here? It was Arkansas. Haven't been beaten since. Time's called. I've always wanted a farm, like my grandparents used to have, with a stable, you know, for the horses, a place where everyone can get together. Kids, grandkids, all my cousins, the whole family, and then pass it on to all the generations that come after me. You once made a promise to yourself about your future. At John Hancock, we have the products you need to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've always wanted. John Hancock, the future is yours. Too bad everything doesn't work as well. And Little Rock, 14 to 12, with 94 seconds to go before the break. Fourth down and seven, and uh, the Razorbacks have sent the punting unit on. Jacob Skinner. Yeah, I, I like this move. As good as Jamarcus Russell is in a two-minute offense, I, I think you cannot give him the ball on the 35-yard line. And so, punter Skinner has had 22 of his punts down inside the 20 this year. Almost half of them. And this one perfectly positioned are the Razorbacks. It bounces back outside and goes out of the 13-yard line. So another effective punt by Jacob Skinner. Tonight on Close to Home, the verdict of a murder case is only the beginning of the most compelling episode of the season. Jennifer Finnegan and David James Elliott star in a new Close to Home tonight on CBS. 14-12. 118, now 117. The clock starts on a ready-for-play indication. This is Ali Broussard's first carry of the game, number 22. Well, we talked about that 50-14 uh, to 14 thrashing from Southern Cal since then. Look at the right side. Yeah. 12 points allowed per game. The defensive yardage way down. Turnovers forced. All well, of which leads to 10 wins in a row. Well, and, you know, I mean, USC's a great team. I mean, they're, they're a great team. And, but if you're playing Arkansas without McFadden and a quarterback, I, I like a lot of teams against Arkansas without McFadden and a quarterback. And McFadden did play in that game, but limited to 42 yards. Yeah. Recall that he was playing with a, a dislocated and surgically repaired left big toe. It's a good strategy by LSU. You don't want to make a mistake down here and give life to it. Don't have a lot of timeouts left. 14-12 going in halftime. Geico halftime report coming up. Archie Manning has joined uh, Tim and Spencer in our New York studios. We'll be going back there for an update on all that's going on. Well, Larry Coker fired today at the University of Miami. A 
uh, just a, a bitterly disappointing season. Are you surprised? No, no, okay. it had to be done. Too many good players there. They need to win too many games. Not acceptable. Not a good enough record. Let's go down to Tracy, who is with Houston Nut. Thanks, guys. Coach, two touchdowns against the number one defense in the country in the first half. How have you been so successful running the ball? Our guys uh, really came out, want to play hard. We know how good they are. They're a great defense. That's why they're the number one defense in the country. But we got to stay on our blocks a little bit better. We got some good backs, but we got to hold our blocks a little bit longer. Down just two. What will you tell your team in the locker room? Hey, it's 30 minutes. It's who wants us the most to me right now. Who wants us the most? Thanks a lot, Coach. Back to you guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. That's the end of the first half. LSU leads it by two. Now let's go back to Tim Brendo in our New York studios. Thank you, Vern. Happy holidays. Coming up with the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer Archie and I will have all of today's scores and highlights, including Texas now needs uh, help to clinch the Big 12 South, while Miami needs a new coach. After this word from your local station. Dennis Haysbert stars in The Unit, CBS Tuesdays. Apocalypto means a new beginning. Unfortunately, to have a new beginning, something else has to end. It's the story of a man who has taken to be sacrificed to the gods against impossible odds. He's got to get back to save his family. Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. Rated New Vicks 44 sore throat. Tell your throat to just chill. And for cough relief, try Vicks 44 cough. First, I want to thank my rival coach here for getting my favorite pizza delivered. That was a class act. Thanks, coach. <laughs> it's not delivery. What? Hey, if this isn't delivery, we'll play the entire game in... Taste the pizza that has no rival. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. <laughs> Just too you can win two tickets to your favorite 07 rivalry game plus a home theater system. See specially marked packages. When you make your living strap to a 2,000 pound blow, you not only got to be tough, you got to be quick on your feet. That's what's so cool about my new Yamaha Grizzly 700. It's not only tough, it's the only ATV with electric power steering and fuel injection. The new Grizzly 700 FI ain't nothing tougher. Now get a free two-year warranty plus a $400 worn winch for just $69.99. November Friday afternoon from Little Rock, Arkansas. Our game being brought to you in high-definition television. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. Here with Arkansas and LSU, two top ten teams early do set. One of two men back as LSU will receive the football to begin the third quarter. Arkansas scored first, missed the extra point, 6-0. LSU went on top 7-6, then made it 14-6. Arkansas with the last touchdown and Vavra's kick goes through the end zone. Touchback, it comes out to the 20. And a moment ago, Tracy Wilson with LSU head coach Les Miles. Coach, your top-rated defense gave up two touchdowns, 125 yards rushing. What adjustments do you need to make? Well, we, we had guys in the right place. We need to tackle crisply. We need we understand what they're doing. We need to get our feet down and start playing ball. If it goes the way it's supposed to, our defense will show up as half. What were the words for your team in the locker room? Well, just understand what we're doing. Come out and play our style of ball. This is our half. Settle down and play LSU football. Thanks a lot, Coach. Back to you guys. Jamarcus Russell had a terrific first half. Nine of ten for 119 yards. He hands it off to Keelan Williams, who gets nothing here. Well, the, the thing I guess we most enjoyed offensively was this wildcat formation yeah. with Arkansas. It, it's really a good strategic football game. I, I disagree with Les a little bit. I think that motion package for Arkansas has that LSU defense on their heels. That's why they're not playing so aggressively. I think more of Eminem, McFadden and Monk for Arkansas. But for LSU, throw the ball. Come on, you got a quarterback that's abusing these guys. I just give it a little look at the running game and throw it. Second and ten. See if they do here. Toss. Keelan Williams going left, hemmed in and caught and dropped at the twenty-yard line. The Arkansas defensive backs are going to play man-to-man. -man. Chris Houston's okay with his guys, but Dwayne Bose handled him a couple times. As you look at the numbers right there, you can see LSU rushed the ball. Not much, you know. 
averaging 163 yards per game coming in. And they look at a third and ten here. Buster Davis goes wide left. Doucette and Bo both wide right. And it is Chris Houston on Dwayne Bow. Bottom of the screen. Blitz coming again. Russell steps up. Oh, my yes. goodness. How about that to Justin Vincent? And Vincent all the way out to the 47. What a heads-up play by Jamarcus Russell. Uh, you can't say it any better than that. Now, he's getting pulled down from behind. It's an all-out blitz. Randy Kelly is going to come on the safety blitz. They wrap up the big guy. But the big guy, Weston Dacus is going to tell you, Dacus is going to tell you, is 260 pounds, and he flips it out after he's wrapped up for a big play on third down. Justin Vincent, that's a 26-yard gain and a first down 10 at the 46. Motion. Ernest Mitchell appears to have penetrated the neutral zone. And he's going to get a quick hook and is brought out of the game. Dead ball. All starts. No, excuse me. All sides. Number 90, defense. First down. Now, Jamarcus Russell not known, Gary, as a runner, but the last two or three games beginning at Tennessee. Yeah, a little bit. And even that fourth quarter drive against uh, last week against Ole Miss, he ran the ball for 22 yards. He was 9 for 14 in the fourth quarter, but he also rushed it. First down and five. Left side, Hester. That should be close to another first down. Matt Hester is a great north-south runner. Just a, you know, just one of those guys that recruited all these backs. I've said this before about LSU, all these pretty backs that can take it the distance. Broussard, Vincent, Keelan Williams. But the guy Les Moss and Jimbo Fisher trust the most is Hester. Played at uh, Evangel High School, a bunch of publicized private high school in the Shreveport area. Same and as uh, John David Booty, right? Yes, as a matter of fact. First down. I think LSU, if they, you know, there's always things you can look back and have over again. You know, they, they pulled that one out against Tennessee. I mean, let's be honest, that could have gone either way. And then two fourth down plays on that drive. But if they could go back and play that Auburn game again, I think they'd like to play that one. They want, they just say, why did we not throw the ball in that game earlier? Mm -hmm. Wound up losing it seven to three. First down and 10. Vincent is the deep back in the eye. Jamarcus Russell, lots of time. Goes deep right side, Dwayne Bow, double coverage, incomplete. Randy Kelly came over to help Chris Houston on that one. Well, that Auburn game in Auburn, a 7-3 defeat. Very controversial pass play late in the game. Yeah, and you had it in the last play to Craig Davis right there to the five-yard line. Can't blame the quarterback on that. You know, guys hoping to throw it. Here's the Florida game. That's the holding call, I guess. On a touchdown, remember the next play was over a couple plays later. It was overturned. Hester inches away, his elbow goes down. That was a good call, and then the fumble. What could have been on the road? Of course, five turnovers yep. in that game by LSU. So those were the two LSU defeats this year. They come into this one nine and two. Yeah. Whistle blew. I don't see a flag. Going. I think the bench from LSU, LSU called that. Yes. That's their first timeout <clears throat> of this half. Excuse me. I, I think from upstairs, Jimbo Fisher did not like that formation and called that play on that timeout. 11.28 to go in the third. Time goal. Opening drive, third quarter. LSU leads it 14 to 12. What's at stake for them? 
if they can finish out with a win a 10 win season and a possible BCS Bowl on the horizon for Arkansas they've won 10 in a row they hope to go into Atlanta next week with an 11 to 1 record to take on the Florida Gators and their hopes remain for a possible BCS championship berth. There's the pass that is incomplete intended for Looked like Hester it was Jacob Hester and a lodge of Butu was there to pick it up. Well, I'll tell you these wide receivers did not do a good job blocking downfield. Craig Davis missed his block but see a lodge of Butu. Craig Davis was supposed to block him and misjudge the speed by a lodge of Butu right there. One of the best open field tacklers and quick starters in college football. Last third down in this drive back at the 20 yard line. Russell was in the process of being sacked. And he alertly shoveled it forward to Justin Vincent. Let's see what Arkansas does now. Now here's the matchup that's been a problem for Arkansas. Richardson out there. Here comes the blitz again. Randy Kelly. They're back. He throws it away. It's caught but short. And a flag is down at the 41 yard line. Yeah I think it's going to be holding by Arkansas on this one isn't there. That would be my guess. Keith Jackson number 99 was right at Jamarcus Russell. And early Doucette limping as he gets I, up. I think Vinette number four that time was just too physical on the play. Holden on the defense. The pass was the club. Cross the line of scrimmage. The hole was on an eligible receiver. The penalty's 10 yards from the previous spot. An automatic first down. Boy, oh boy. Ooh. Another third and long. That's the fourth in this game, I believe. Yep. Well, and uh, Vanette was not identified, but he is pulled from the field. I think it was early Doucette who he was trying to cover. It's one of those uh, reversals. He goes inside, Doucette does when he comes out. Looks like he grabbed him a bit. Now, Ali Broussard is on the field for LSU. So second, third and long conversion in this drive. Here's the handoff to Broussard. Quick open to the left side. Spins down to the 26. Fred Helms, nice job that time. Center for the LSU team. That, that offensive line has gotten better. You know, we saw them earlier. They're more physical. They do a better job of putting their helmets on the defenders and pushing them out of the way. Take a look at the previous play where the hold was called. This is the contact as the quarterback. Yeah, I, I actually think the hold actually might have happened a little bit before that, to tell you the truth. When, when Doucette reversed his field, that's when the hold happened. Draw play. Broussard Whoa. bangs up the middle, has a first down at the 21 yard line. An impressive opening drive by LSU, uh, particularly that. 26 yard gain on third and 10 and then shooting themselves in the foot Arkansas with the holding well, well think about that if you're an Arkansas fan you basically had him stop twice you know he had a sack on Jamarcus where he flips the ball to Justin uh, Vincent and then right down here just a little bit less hands on early Doucette even if you let him catch it and tackle him they're not going to get a first down ninth play of the drive Broussard to the 15. And it allows us to spend a moment back in New York for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim Brown. Fellas, if Arkansas leads the SEC in trick plays, how about Nebraska here in the Big 12? Joe Gans, a backup quarterback, takes the snap, hits Barry Turner, a 29-yard touchdown on a fake field goal, giving Nebraska the lead by seven over Colorado, nearing halftime there. Vern? All right, thank you, Tim. Ninth play of the drive here to open the third quarter. Here's Broussard again. Out all of last year with a, a knee problem. Had some weight issues earlier this season. You know, I, I remember uh, doing an LSU game. I guess it was the Tennessee game when I kind of questioned Les Moss. I go, what, what are they running these plays for? They can easily be throwing the ball right now. They got the hot quarterback, and then they faked the punt. Remember, Les? I right. said, I, excuse me, Les. <laughs> well, you know. In this drive right here, he, you know, I called for the pass. What has he done? Run the ball seven times, thrown it three times. He does his game. Give him credit. Les Miles runs his offense. Third and two. Jordan is the fullback. Broussard is the deep back. Broussard follows Jordan's effort and appears to have enough for a first down at the 10-yard line. 
Weston Dacus, number 30, made the tackle. Yeah, they're they're sticking it right up the middle against this Arkansas defense. I like Les Miles, don't you? Yes. We, we had dinner with, yes. him, with him, came up, talked to us. Very emotional. Flew down for that uh, service for Bo on Monday. Flew back in time for practice. Like to get that shuttle. Wouldn't wait for some of my travel. He was back. Oh, back up the bus and complain <laughs> to me. Oh, listen to you. <laughs> Inside. First down and ten. Toss left. Keelan Williams. Look at that. Nice job. Oh that. boy, Sam Olajabutu. He's just a great open field tackler. He's in. He's in the mold of Sam Mills. You know what? You don't have to be tall to play linebacker. This is this fake inside pitch out. He's got Keelan Williams, and watch him straighten up. He runs sideways to the sideline, but he keeps his shoulders square to the running back. That's why he's able to face up and make that tackle. Beautiful technique. Now, this is where LSU likes to use that wide receiver screen, don't they? We've seen it before. I'm, I'll bet you we get a little bow on the wide receiver screen. And bow goes left, and so does Chris Houston who's following him all day long. Davis is to the right side. Demarcus Russell rolling right, flips it out, his receiver slip. Justin Vincent at the 10-yard line. And so here we go, Gary, another third and 10. Yeah, and, and this one I, th I think is almost a must-stop for this Arkansas defense. Not, not because they will lose the game, it's just they need a stop. This defense needs to have some positive feedback, and if another third down conversion here, I, th I think they might go in a little funk. And so, Doucette back on the field. They're going to have their three receivers. Vanette and Olajavudu come on defensively. Davis to the top. Doucette and Bo to the right, bottom of the screen. You got it. This is where they like to run that receiver screen. It's Houston on Bo. Russell never saw the man coming from the corner. And the pass should have been picked off by Vanette. He dropped it. Well, this is a busted assignment by LSU. The sack leader in the SEC is Jamal Anderson. He's right here. Nobody touches him. You can't have a nobody touch. The guy has 10 sacks, a full run at Jamarcus Russell. That is a busted assignment for LSU. It almost cost him. Robinson instead of Anderson. Oh, excuse me, that was 97. Okay. Yep, still just, he's got six and a half sacks. Colt David. To add three. Matt Flynn, the backup quarterback with a hole. The snap is down. Kick is up and right through. Two defensive ends. My mistake. I thought it was Anderson. It was Robinson. The other side, he comes untouched. Has one right in the back, and he lays it right into number two. is going to have a buy one get one free razor sale this weekend. I'm going to get a razor with VCAS and navigation system and I get another one free. <laughs> I wish for a million dollars in world peace. <laughs> get your wish at the Verizon Wireless buy one razor get one free sale. Buy one fully loaded Moto razor for just 49.99 and get the second one free. Hurry, only 3 days left. The best gifts come with the network. Verizon Wireless. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Aflac. Verizon Wireless. And by Budweiser Select. Second 
17 12 after a 15 play drive the end of which was a 28 yard field goal tomorrow our Home Depot SEC coverage on CBS continues with Georgia Tech into Athens to take on the Georgia Bulldogs that's tomorrow at 3 30 Eastern time and it all begins with the TIAA Craft College Football Today program tomorrow at 3 o'clock. War Memorial Stadium filled to the brim. Ryan Gaudet is going to kick off again. He's yeah. the guy who kicked it short last time. That was the push, wasn't it, Matt? Yep. It's a huge game for the SEC. They really need Georgia to beat Georgia Tech for credibility. They're in this thing. Florida and Arkansas are rooting big time for Georgia. A lot of key games still to be played and in terms of the shuffle and the clamor over the BCS. Gaudet will kick. And he comes short to the near side. Fair catch. Called for and taken at the 37-yard line. Injury update. Let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Trace. Thanks, guys. You won't see LSU linebacker Allie Highsmith out there. He was taken to the locker room right before the end of the half with a left ankle injury. He heard it earlier in the game, got it taped, went back out there, but couldn't go full speed. They taped him again at the half. They expected him to go back in, but he just went back into the locker room with no tape and a nice pack on his left ankle. Not looking good right now. Okay, Tracy. Casey Dick, the quarterback, first offensive play for Arkansas in the third quarter. They hand it off in the reverse to Darren McFadden. Boy, is he quick. He is, isn't he? Oh. Darren really, uh, really is something to watch. I don't know if the TV kind of shows it the way it does when you're watching it in your eye. Let's let's look at this, uh, these wins. He wins this year. Tennessee over Cal, you know, it started out early, and that's a huge one. How about that LSU Arizona Arizona's turned around had a pretty nice year hasn't mm -hmm. it? and of course the one that everyone's still talking about the one that's really hurting this conference is this one right here I mean you know USC is running with it SEC's uh, struggling with that Arkansas loss McFadden 12 carries for 66 yards Felix Jones gets nothing on this one Charles Alexander number 91 was there well, the computers look at the non-conference schedules. This is where the computers come into play. And uh, their non-conference schedule, the 28 and 5, the teams that they play, right. Arkansas, Nebraska, and they've got Notre Dame coming up. Yeah, that, that's the, the problem with all these rules, like I, I would like to have a rule that the second place team can't go to the championship. But what do you do with Notre Dame if you pass that rule? See, that's, that's the problem with that rule right there. They don't have a conference. No, no, all those games were independent. We just picked two of their strongest wins and two of their weakest teams they have played and there's a pass play Danny McCray breaks it up and see they played Michigan and North Carolina lost heavily to Michigan uh, North Carolina yeah. Army and still gonna play USC but it, but again you know it's it's when you play a team and uh, how, what players you have right now Arkansas they need to go to Monk they need to find a way to get the ball to Monk Monk's right in the slot this time. Can they find a way? It's going to be a zone defense from LS here. Casey Dick back. Dances right. Still nobody open. Chased and throws it away. Tyson Jackson was there to shadow him. And it'll be fourth down. Would not be surprised if we don't get a little taste of Mitch Mustaine the next time Arkansas comes on the field. It just seems like they need, this offense needs something. Maybe just a series. Casey Dick, modest numbers today. He's 3 of 11. There is Mustaine, who played up the road from Fayetteville in Springdale, Arkansas. It's not up the road from here. Undefeated as a starter, by the way. Yes, 8-0. <laughs> Got his first start against Utah State. Here's Jacob Skinner with uh, that very unusual pre-punt ritual. I guess that has to do with visualization. Huh? And uh, the fair catch is taken by Buster Davis. 39 yard punt, nothing on the return. 6.05. Razorbacks unable to move. Their first possession of the third quarter. LSU's got it back. Rumsfeld. He's got a special top 10 with Dr. Phil. Plus, Helen Hunt, all new tonight. Sunday on 60 Minutes, the testing of the new pill for the memory. The results could change millions of lives. It's a story you won't forget on 60 Minutes Sunday. And don't forget, later in the game, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Second offensive set of this half by LSU. They've got it at their own 15-yard line. 
They went 15 plays, 70 yards, got a 28-yard field goal to open the third quarter. Three wide, out of the gun. They hand it off. And Jacob Hester gets out near the 27-yard line. Well, what kind of a day has Jamarcus Russell had? Well, it's been big plays. He's been making them to his wide receivers against the man coverage. And he went deep one time to Craig Davis on a stutter for the touchdown, but fumbled on the quarterback sneak. That's uh, been a little problem on the sneaks, but boy, whether it's inside the offense or right here outside the offense, the guy is a playmaker. Second down and three. Twin receivers to the left side. Bo is the slot receiver this time. And off up the middle, the quick opener to Keelan Williams, number five, and he's tackled by Jarrell Norton, number 27. You know, Reggie Herring was really into the face of his defense uh, after that last seven. They stopped it for a field goal last time. He told, he knows, he knew right then, I think, that he was going to get these body punches again. He needed to get his team juiced up to really suck it up and stop the run. I thought LSU would come out and throw the ball. They've done just the opposite and took it right up the gut of this defense for Arkansas. Well, Justin Vinson is the tailback. Memorable for his freshman year, 1,001 yards. Nothing close to that since. He gets the block here. Wide open is Hester. Wide open is Hester. First down at the 34-yard line. Yeah, he ran it on... Matt, Matt Hewitt, Hewitt. Yeah, yep. Matt Hewitt was the guy who had a man-to-man -man coverage in the wheel route right up the sideline. You got a fullback, such a valuable player. He's going to come right here, and there's Hewitt. It's got a man-to-man -man looking right at him. That's his man. Cuts inside. It's a beautiful play to get inside the leverage. And Jamarcus Russell doesn't overthrow it. He's got a gun, but he didn't need a gun. He just needed a little pea shooter on that one. Loft it right in there. Yards after the catch, 130 now. Hester picked up 38 yards on that play. And a first down. Here's Justin Vinson going left. Chris Houston closes quickly and uh, holds him to a five-yard. Well, make it a six-yard game. This uh, LSU offense beginning to yeah. assert itself. You know, when I, when I watched uh, LSU early in the Florida game and in the Tennessee game, I, I thought that their offensive line wasn't very physical. They have completely changed. I mean, they, they can match up with anyone now. They have a quarterback that provides big plays, and they have an offense that's very physical offensive line. Black, Johnson, Johnson, Helms, Diakowski, they matching up well for this conference. See that complete domination in time of possession, third quarter. Second down, Hester. It'll be third and short at the 26. Well, in the middle of that offensive line is a, a young man who is a native of Arkansas, Brett Helms, number 74. Grew up in Stuttgart. There's Helms. His dad is a PhD graduate of Louisiana State, an agronomist, and works in the rice industry in Stuttgart. His mom is from Baton Rouge, but to his hometown, not too far from here. Stuttgart, Arkansas. Third and one. Ali Broussard, that should be enough for the first. Oh, still fighting. Yeah, I, I could say enough. Enough and enough and enough. Ball came out. Oh. Again. Second time today. Fumble. That's funny, I saw the beanbag long before I saw the ball. You got eyes for beanbags, I'll tell you that. This is so reminiscent of the quarterback sneak, and it's ripped out late. Was it Norton, Jarrell Norton, number 27, that rips it up? Mitchell, number 90's in there. And the ball pops out very late. Well, that's Jarrell Norton. Jarrell Norton, number 27, got it. Isn't that interesting? Both the quarterback sneak and that play were both first downs and both turnovers. And some would say rather than play. eyes for beanbags, yeah. I have beanbags for <laughs> eyes. Well, they're going to they're gonna review, well, review it. And here again, just to be redundant. The previous play is under further review. Got to look for his knees on the play. Yeah, now. absolutely. We were looking to see who ripped it out. Replay official today is Doyle Jackson, a retired SEC 
referee. All right. Knee, knee. I think it's out. I think so, too. His forward progress, he was still falling forward. That ball's out. That ball's loose as he's going down. Gerald Norton, high school, true freshman, rather, from uh, Cedar Hill, Texas. Just kept fighting, grabbed the ball, and I just, I, I, I don't see enough to no. overturn that call. Well, to me, I see enough to, to conclude confirm it. That it was yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so far in this third quarter, LSU has run 21 plays to three for Arkansas. That is as big a turnover as you can have with the way the flow of the game was going right there. Broussard is going, please, just put my knee near that grass, that turf. After further review, video evidence confirms the call on the field. It is a fumble, a recovery, first down. First look was the definitive look. Yep, sure was. You know, Broussard did a good job of protecting the ball there, too. I mean, it, it just was ripped out. He was, you know, uh, in the middle of all those players, and it got ripped. Second fumble inside Arkansas territory. On the reverse, they hand it to Felix Jones. He flies by one, breaks a tackle, runs out to the 35-yard line. Finally stopped by Jesse Daniels. He's got some speed. He sure he, does. What a dub. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator for Auburn, told us. We were talking to him about Arkansas. He said, you know, I almost wanted to put a curtain up on the 50-yard line before we were getting ready for Arkansas. He said they're so big and fast, those big running backs. And he said, you know, McFadden's a freak, but number 25 could start for about eight of the SEC teams as their featured tailback. Wildcat formation, that means McFadden is the quarterback. He hands it off to Phoenix Jones, they go right. Jones uses that speed to get by Chevis Jackson. And it's back-to-back -back big runs for the young man from Tulsa, Oklahoma. LaRon Landry was just furious. He thought he got held on the play, but you know, Felix Jones is going to have to come over for a blow on this after one. They've ran two sprints in a row. Landry's to the top of the screen right there. He thinks he gets held by the shoulder. I, I think he may be right. I, I think he may be right. Monk looked like he got him on the shoulder pad. Looks like a sideline warning for LSU was delivered by Rocky Good. Well, McFadden's with 66 yards. Jones with 106. And they'll go with the Wildcat formation again. It's all man coverage. Keeps it. Stiff arm. Comes another stiff arm. And a twist. Guy's pretty good, isn't he? You know, he's such a great athlete. That's what comes to mind with me. I mean, fast, powerful, smart. Watch how long, I, you really couldn't tell on that one, how patient he was to fake the handoff. And it, <laughs> there, there you go, you got Beckwith eyeing him up, but he throws Beckwith, Beckwith down like he's a high school player. I'm going to mention, well, there you go, vote for Darren. There's been some uh, conversation in the last two or three weeks about the Heisman. I think the hopes of the Arkansas athletic staff is to begin a campaign for McFadden for next year's. Heisman. Here's his carry to the 42-yard line. We did mention already that he's a finalist for the Doak Walker Award, speaking of great athletes. Well, he's the best I've seen this year. And uh, down to Tracy for more. Vern, you talked about Arkansas. They've stepped up their efforts to help get him to New York this year. And as you said, put him in position to be the front runner next season. Arkansas has sent out 1,000 postcards last week to the media and has a website up to showcase McFadden to the country. We spoke to him. He said it's all real flattering, but it's not the focus right now. Here he is going right up the middle. The Wildcat formation. How about that and he held on to the ball. Hog tie that wildcat. There's no way. It's a good thing they put that rule in that you have to play three years or Arkansas might be watching their last game with this guy playing. He could play at any level. Fake it, running start. As you said, the Tebow answer from Arkansas and he just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and going. 
And he grew up in Little Rock as an Arkansas fan. He said his uh, his idol as a young boy was Terrell Davis, the fine running back who played, of course, for the Denver Broncos and whose career was cut short by knee injuries. But uh, Darren McFadden, you want to mark the time? Let's see, five after four Central Time, and next year's Heisman campaign <laughs> has started. officially gotten underway. That's the end of three, 17 to 12 LSU. We'll return after this word from your local station. And run it. Hasn't caught it yet today, but pretty impressive. Yeah, and remember that one deep route he drew a pass interference penalty, but uh, you know, like I said in the open, it, it sometimes appears that there's three or four or five number fives on the field. There's only one, and he's doing it all. And he has his team in position now. But they do trail by five, 17-12 as we begin the fourth. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. Now, now think about this. This is against LSU, the second-rated rush defense in the country. They have not given up a 100 rushing, single individual rushing performance all year. Until today, Felix Jones with 107. Here's Casey Dick. That's short, wide to the right. Well, Casey Dick is not having the kind of day that he had envisioned coming into No, that's for sure. Uh, not a 100 rusher all year. Felix Jones is already over 100. They might have two in this football game. Right. That's how good this rushing attack is for Arkansas. LSU had a nice game plan going in the third quarter, but they turned it over. When you're playing that move the chain offense and you turn it over, you let this crowd get back in the football game. And now LSU is going to have, I think, if they don't stop me here, going to have to have one of those fourth quarters again. Felix Jones tries to squirt through. He picks up about three, perhaps four to the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up a rather large third down. Well, the Arkansas rush offense against the defense. Arkansas comes in fourth in the country. And uh, you see second in yards per rush. And today, 188 yards. Here's McFadden. Here's the Wildcat. Yep. Here's Robert Johnson to the bottom of the screen, the old quarterback. And here's movement up front. Looks like a procedure call coming up against the Razorbacks. Stephen Parker. Head ball. Ball start. That's a couple Number of costly penalties by On Parker. He had the clip that wiped out a touchdown the in, the, uh, in the down. first half. Yes. You can see, uh, I, I, read, I read a little article about Stephen Parker, you know, getting upset with some of his teammates for penalties. Remember that? He gave, but this time it was Stephen Parker. Who, oh, he looks like he was going to pull on the play, didn't it? Well, you see number 46, who's there? Earlier in the season, yep. he moved on a play. Parker came over and gave him a forearm to the chin. Here's Felix Jones trying to round the corner. Ridden out of bounds at the 27-yard line. It's going to be fourth down. See, and, that, and I think that call was made with the idea that get it into field goal range right now. Now they gained a little bit more than maybe they thought. Do you give the ball to McFadden in the Wildcat and say, let's see if we can pick this up? You know, I think you do, Gary, because you've got Jeremy Davis, who's missed one extra point already today. He's only 6 of 11. His long for the year is 44. So I go with you. I bet they roll the dice here. I think so, too. Fourth and three. You got to go Wildcat, don't you? They are not. Casey Dixon in, in the game. McFadden's alongside. Two wide receivers to the left. Monk, who's caught only one. And a LSU timeout. Yep, timeout. Well, LSU. Stop uh, the clock with 13.58 to go. 17-12. Fourth down, three hogs when we come back. This was last week's Pontiac game-changing performance. Virginia Tech kept Wake Forest from clinching a share of the ACC Atlantic Division title when Josh Morgan broke open the game with his 53-yard TD reception early in the third quarter. The Hokies never looked back on their way to a fifth straight win. Go online to view and vote for this week's top plays. The winning school will receive a $5,000 general scholarship contribution courtesy of Pontiac in the only fan-voted scholarship award program. And when you vote, you can register to win a $5,000 scholarship for you or someone in your family. Two out of every three Pontiacs sold have 200 horsepower or more. Two out of three get 30 highway miles per gallon or better. They all come with the best coverage in America. 
And this holiday season, we tagged each one in red. And the price on that tag is the price you'll pay. Google Pontiac and check it out for yourself. The Pontiac Red Tag event. See some red, save some green. Let me tell you this, pal. The Fritos Chili Cheese Wrap is a full meal. Totally, yeah. All wrapped up, and they got the Fritos, the chili, that cheese. It's a Absolutely, hearty, hearty thing. Absolutely, man. Yeah. It's a full meal and a tortilla. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. I couldn't really? ask. Yeah. Cool, I'm going to yeah. have your tots, then. Is that cool? What? No, it's... Ah! Okay, yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. They're coming back down to earth there, Screamy. Ah! Fritos Chili Cheese Wrap. Only at Sonic. Fritos Corn Chips with chili and cheese and a side of tots, just $2.99. Give a reloadable My Sonic card today. It's not just good. It's Sonic good. Only four amazing race teams are left, and the beauty queens are on everyone's hit list. We're not evil blondes. A new amazing race on CBS Sunday after 60 minutes. Opening moments of the fourth quarter, Arkansas looks at a fourth down and three, and they trail by five, trying to get to the Southeastern Conference Championship game with an 11 and one record. Houston Nutt, head coach. And he will have McFadden alongside Casey Dick. Dick has had a tough day. Three of 12. Backs up. Darts right. Nobody there. In real trouble. And downed all the way back at the 42 by Ricky Charles Jean Francois. Arkansas should have taken a timeout. They were going to go to Monk, but look at the call by Bo Pelini. He put Laron Landry right there. Two guys on Monk, but watch Casey Dick. He doesn't see it. He's going to go to Monk, and then, uh-oh, he does nothing. A misread. If ever there was a time for a timeout for Arkansas, it was right there. Two guys on Monk, nothing he could do. In fact, they even had a dropping linebacker to that side, and by the time Monk got late, open late, it was too late. Yeah, when he raised his hand, his quarterback was going down. You talk people into operations where their chance of dying is 80%. Rebecca's chances of dying on the table are 100%. Three pounds. New episode, CBS Tuesday. Uh, class of 94, here I come. When you want to make a good impression, Enterprise Rent-A-Car will pick you up free and get you going in style. Looking good, news. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. You've been looking forward to a celebration this big all year. It's Red Lobster's Big Seafood Festival, a feast of new combinations of our biggest seafood. Indulge in rock lobster tail, king crab, and jumbo scampi. Only at Red Lobster. for our Geico Scoring Recap. Darren McFadden opened the scoring with a one-yard plunge. The extra point no good. Six-nothing. Arkansas, then LSU got the next two. First of all, Williams, Keelan Williams on a 29-yard touchdown run. Extra point was good. And then Buster Davis, a 47-yard reception as Matero Richardson was turned around for the Razorbacks. Davis in, extra point was good. Arkansas... Marcus Monk, a 21-yard reception. Great effort at the end of the play. The try for two, no good. That made it 14-12. And in this quarter, a 28-yard field goal from Colt David. And that's where we stand, 17-12. Most recently, a try for first down and fourth and three, unsuccessful. Oh, uh, real. I want to go back to that last play. Fourth and three, maybe the biggest play of the game. And number five doesn't get the ball. Fake to him or touches the ball on that play. Jamarcus Russell on first down. Vincent comes out near side. Russell back, looks into the flat, caught by Hester. And a quick opening play, and uh, that's good to the 45 and a half yard line. Take another look at that. We we thought they'd go with the wild. Oh, for sure. I think that's why LSU took a timeout. They thought they'd go with the Wildcat. Here's McFadden right here. There's Monk to the bottom of the screen. Don't even fake it to him. In fact, he's staying in the block on the play. 
Well, I, that's not my favorite call so far. The only thing you didn't say, because I can see your facial twitch, yeah. is ouch. Yeah, that, that one was a little strange. Second and five. Russell hands it off to Hester. It'll be third and three, third and four, maybe. Antoine Robinson makes the tackle on Jacob Hester. Third and four. LSU, nine and two, both defeats on the road. Early in the season, seven to three at Auburn. Mid-season at Florida. We've heard from other coaches and players around the conference their expressed belief that LSU is the best yeah, team. If you pulled them, that's what they'd say. In the SEC. And we have heard it from more than a couple. Third and four. Russell Davis. Where's the spot? It'll be, oh, it's now ruled incomplete. And Matero Richardson, who's been victimized a couple of times, wins this battle, knocks it away. Well, stick it, Gary Danielson. Matero Richardson this time does it right. See how he's inside? Inside technique and stays with it. And even if Davis catches the ball, Richardson does a good job keeping him short of the first down. He was tired of me yelling at him. <laughs> and that's going to bring on Chris Jackson. Reggie Fish, all 5'7", 160 pounds. He is back to return the punt. Peyton Hillis, who normally they come after the block and don't get it. Hillis is uh, out with a bum wheel. This one goes into the end zone. Touchback after the 20. 53-yard punt. 12 minutes, 31 seconds remaining. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Chick-fil-A, Geico, Red Lobster, and by The Hartford. Crowd of 55,833 watching this one. LSU leads by five. That's the third largest crowd in stadium history dating back 58 years. Coming up next, time permitting the TIAA Craft College Football Today report. War Memorial Stadium, built in 1948. And now here's Casey Dick with a play fake. Steps up, fires it out, intercepted. Picked off on the left side by LeRon Landry. Casey Dick threw it right to his midsection. He actually was throwing the ball to the tight end, but threw it high. Threw it right over the hands of his tight end on the play, coming across. Wes Murphy just threw a bad ball. Casey Dick has struggled in this football game. This is the guy who's going to throw the ball coming right here. It goes high, and this is the guy who catches it. Watch this. You expect your quarterback at this level to make this throw. Throws it right over his head and right to the defensive back. Whoop. I hope he was throwing it to him because the other guy was double covered. You can see it. And so picked off by Landry, the all-conference free safety, his second interception of the year. And Casey Dick's difficult day continues. He's 3 of 13. Russell for Bo. Shoves off, grabs it. Incomplete. Couldn't hang on. Chris Houston tussling with him in the end zone. See how calm Chris Houston stayed with that ball in the air. You see so many guys who aren't used to this panic. Now watch, he watches, stays there, tussles, tussles, and then gets his hands and rips right at the end. Doesn't give up on the play, doesn't grab it, and takes his last little rip and pushes that ball out. Wonderful play by Houston. Yeah, a little jostling, a little bit, but that's you're going to get away with that when you're that skilled. Young man from Austin, Texas, LBJ High School. Two interceptions last week, the first two of his career. One of them was returned 87 yards for a touchdown. And LSU uses its final timeout of the ball game with 11.44 remaining. Can I take your order, please? I want candy. Black coffee in bed. The CBS Sports Desk is presented by the new AT&T. And we're back at War Memorial with an 11.44 to go, 17 to 12, a second down now. 
for LSU. Second and goal. Hester stopped, looked for a moment. Yes, it did. Didn't like it? he was going to go a long way. It ways. sure did. Closed up very quickly. Well, it was Elijah Butu, so no surprise. Yeah, that it was he close. just hits at full speed, doesn't he? Elijah Butu, number 24, just sees it and plays downhill as, and in space. Boom, two guys right on the plate, da Dacus and Elijah Butu. It's a must stop here for Arkansas. Yep. They got to keep it to eight. Field goal keeps it to eight. Fairly big one now. Watch the screen. Jacob Hester is the running back. Three wide receivers. Doucette was in the slot. Doucette gets the ball. Doucette has a yeah. touchdown. Wow. Took him a while to make sure he had possession. Double catch goes to the offense. Into the slot. They fake the wide receiver screen. Kind of a fade to the inside guy. A lot of space out there. And see it, Doucette inside. One-on-one, -on -one, balls thrown to the outside. And Doucette, the high school quarterback, had that big catch against Tennessee, makes another big one here. Darius Vanette, the defender. Colt David is on for the extra point. Casey Dick threw the interception. Picked off by LaRon Landry. It sets up a short touchdown toss from Jamarcus Russell to early Doucette over Vinette, LSU, on top. The German word for safe is seeker. His compassion off the field, plus quick hits. Charlie Casserly and more on the NFL today here on the home of Super Bowl 41, CBS Sports. Well, you never learn. You can't use LT around ah. me during Thanksgiving. That LT, that this kind of sends those shivers, that interception. How, uh, how, how long was the run back with the interception? <laughs> 100 yards. A uh -huh. uh, hundred. Could have been 500 yards if the field was longer. <laughs> yeah, I always enjoy watching those games from Detroit on. <laughs> no, LT on Thanksgiving just doesn't matter. No, this one is Tomlinson, not Taylor. And that one goes through the end zone it'll be a touchback and the Arkansas Razorbacks will start from the 20. Red Lobster scholar athlete today is Arkansas's Jeremy Davis a 3.31 grade point average in kinesiology member of the academic honor roll Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating a thousand dollars to Arkansas's general scholarship fund. There's Davis, missed extra point in the first half, has not had a field goal chance in this game. First down and 10. McFadden. Say goodbye. Darren McFadden, 80 yards, touchdown. Well, you said to me during the timeout, <laughs> they need to score quickly. Well, what they needed to do was give the ball or fake the ball to number five. I think that's pretty obvious. This guy is a special football player, and Arkansas is going to kick themselves if they lose this football game for that third and three call. Fourth, Fourth and, three. and three call. Jeremy Davis. McFadden has now surpassed Madre Hill as the all-time, oh boy, he just did sneak that one inside the right upright. McFadden, 1,465 yards, running with a very sore left big toe. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to say, I don't know about that anymore. This guy... You know, he's the closest thing that I've seen since Eric Dickerson. He reminds me of Eric Dickerson's great new age speed. <laughs> and John Ramsey's first interview since Patsy's death, 48 hours Saturday.
10 31 to go five point game the roars have not subsided since we left you this is a team again LSU has not giving up one 100 yard rusher there's two in this game what a running attack for Arkansas Trendon Holiday he's got great speed Come on. say goodbye Trendon Holiday 92 yards here's one I'll raise you one he's the fastest guy including track guys this guy is a legit sprinter in high school he, he, he could run backwards faster than most of these guys three-time 100 meter and 200 meter champ in his high school division in Louisiana Trendon Holiday that's Houston nut that's Les Miles what a way to make a living ten men on the field and they don't have a timeout no it doesn't matter back up five yards and kick it don't panic now holy cow My gosh. Well, last couple of minutes have been intriguing. Yeah. It started out, remember, first and 10, 20 yard line, hand the ball after a running back, one cutback, two cutbacks back by Jesse Daniels, and an 80 yard sprint, and McFadden shows everybody how to make a big play. So Arkansas is back in the game, and for those people who believe in momentum, everybody thinks Arkansas has got it, but uh, look at Holiday. Oh, there's no way. He can watch him look back. Are you kidding me? No one's going to catch me. He just kind of glides into the end zone. He's a tiny mite. <laughs> 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 what do you mean little guys can't play this game? I, no, I asked Les Miles and Jimbo Fisher. I go, were, were you worried about recruiting this guy? He goes, well, if you ever saw him play high school ball, you wouldn't have been recruited. He was recruited as a legitimate weapon for us, and he is. So you saw the graphic. That's the first one since Kevin Falk. Now, the guys wearing uh, the red uniforms, the crimson uniforms, McFadden has returned 192 yards for a kick uh, touchdown. He did that last week. Felix Jones has two in his resume, one this year and one last year. There's McFadden, Felix Jones, number 25. I'd kick it to the four guys up front, besides the two guys back there. See Felix Jones, look at the, the, the averages are gaudy. Felix Jones in his career, two of 100 yards, and he'll have a chance for a 99-yard return here. I'm not kidding. I thought I was going to get in your life. Have you ever? If he'd have gone all the way, you would have given me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. <laughs> I, you don't practice these, but if he takes this one, I'm sure I'm going to get in your life. Have you ever seen anything like that? <laughs> oh, mercy. <laughs> come on. If you come and watch SEC football, what do you do? You get your money's worth, right? I think so, yes. Holy cow. That was a 62-yard return. And, and you know what? What's great is 25 and 5. They don't take a rest. They stay on the football field. Here's the handoff to uh, McFadden. No. Look at him turn the corner. Oh! oh did LeRon Landry feel that? You know, he, he just outflanked a corner Jonathan Zenon, who had dead to rights. There's no way McFadden should get outside of him. Now, you watch this. Is he's going to take it? They've got this defense. Whoa, right outside. I'm sorry. It was a Shepard Jackson, number 21, had him dead to rights. Gets outside, and then LaRon Landry, the All American safety, gets run over by the McFack truck. Here comes the Wildcat. Here's Felix Jones. 
That's to the 27-yard line. And we near the nine-minute mark. Now, think about this. McFadden has run for 166 yards. Felix Jones, 124 yards. Can you imagine the LSU defense sucking wind right now? They've seen about every quick motion reverse you could have. This time we'll go right up the middle. There's McFadden. Man, oh man, oh man. First down at the 21. Remember when you said that if you'd poll the coaches, they would say that LSU's the best team in the SEC. Right. I, I would I like to rephrase that a little bit. I think they would say they are the most talented team okay. in the SEC. We're well, just splitting hairs a little bit, but this team is taking it right to the most talented front seven in the SEC for 276 yards rushing. McFadden gets a rest on this play. Felix Jones. And there's a motion Again. call in the offensive line. There is so much energy in this stadium right now. I mean, the offensive linemen can't keep in their st stance. Ten ball, ball start. Number 61, offense. Tells these five yards, previous spot, pink first down. That's the seventh penalty on Arkansas. And it uh, momentarily quiets the crowd. Now, Monk who has only the one catch in this ball game goes wide to the left and they give him plenty of space. Damian Williams is also back on the field bottom of the screen. Here's Jones coming right. Landry saved a bunch. Nice tackle up on high by LaRon Landry. You know even though it looks again that Marcus Monk only had one guy covering him. Jesse Daniels the other safety was sliding over there to take away that deep throw that jump ball to the end zone to the six foot six, in six inch Marcus Monk the former basketball player. They're not going to let him have a one on one out there. And we'll see the Wildcat formation McFadden in the shotgun. He's thrown once today. We'll keep it this time. Inside the 15 to the 14. Oh, it, it's four down territory. They, they ain't kicking any more field goals in this one. Nope. Well, let's see. 30. No, no, no. Nope. No, they, no they more field goals. Touchdown. Yep. That's why they ran that play right up the gut because they knew they had third and fourth down to pick this up. Casey Dick back in at quarterback. Dick. Tough day. Third, three of 13. Third and three from the 15. See the safety over the top. Come right to the 10. That should be enough for a first down. I'd like to tackle this guy. I mean, he lowers his head. He sprints. He cuts back. He fakes the. You know, it's the first time I've ever seen a game where the other team goes, "Oh, good, they got their quarterback in this time." <laughs> <laughs> first down and 10. 31-19. 6:42 to go. When we began the afternoon at 1.30, it was a 10 and 1 Arkansas team hoping that if they won this one, won next week, things might break right. They have a, a chance at a BCS championship spot. Here's the handoff, or no, there's no handoff. McFadden goes left, stopped for one of the few times today at the nine yard line by Jason Spadoni. And this uh, LSU team comes in 9 and 2, both losses to top five teams on the road. They won at Tennessee. Les Miles trying to go 10 win season back to back and a possible BCS Bowl spot with a victory. Yeah. So much on the line here. Interesting when we asked Les about that he said I'm going to be upset if we win because I'll just think about what we could have done. Yeah. Second down toss. Going to throw it. Look back for Casey Dick wide open. Has the ball at the five yard line. The pass was a little slow. Yeah, he got hit, boy. Chevis Jackson got him. It looks like it might be ribs. That was great recognition by Chevis Jackson that time. This was a throwback. Easy to see up here, but very difficult to see on the field. Quarterback's going to pitch it. Chevis Jackson's in double, oh, double right there. He passes off. One monk and then recognizes the quarterback. Is that a nice job? He passes off monk. Oh, head to head, wasn't it? Head to head on Dick. Helmet to helmet. So they will go from the wildcat formation on third down. Robert Johnson is in. Casey Dick 
walked off without assistance. Third down, Felix Jones comes right, gets a couple of blocks, heads for the goal line, touchdown, Arkansas. Uh, I, I'll tell you, this quick motion, uh, there'll be teams all over the country coming down to Arkansas to study this quick wide receiver motion and how to run these sweeps to the wide side of the field. Now, all the teams in the country don't have a number five to hand the ball off to. They get leveraged so easily outside on those sweeps to Jones. Jeremy Davis for the extra point. Jacob Skinner is the holder. Brett Good snaps it back. Extra point is good. Just watch how quick they get outside because of this quick motion. These linebackers are told not to look at the motion. They stay, play honest, they have to play honest, and then they get to the outside, and number, tw number 25 reaches that ball out and touches the line. That's a touchdown. You know, this is our first year together. If we hang around long enough, we'll get some decent games. <laughs> it's been awesome. Put his arm up. I didn't see him, as a matter of fact. Uh -uh. And the official saying, hey, that wasn't much of a fair catch. Uh, the line judge told him the same thing. Okay. So here we go. 447 remaining. LSU leading by five. Out of timeouts. Uh, Houston Nutt likes to call it overpopulate the line of scrimmage with defensive backs. Well, you're going to see Arkansas overpopulate the box right now. They're going to come up and challenge LSU to throw the football. They have to have a stop. Hester and Jordan are the backs. Here they come. Hester got him. Weston Dacus, the middle linebacker, number 30. And Randy Kelly, the guy I circled on the play, came up from the safety spot and cleaned up on it. You got to overpopulate the box at this time of the game and force the other team into throwing. Hester limps off, by the way. Vincent comes on, second down, 10. See, that's the guy they like to throw the ball to on those little slip, safe plays out of the backfield. Bo goes right, matched up with Chris Houston. Jamarcus Russell back to throw, pumps, drills it incomplete. Houston was right with Dwayne Bo. There's a flag on this side at the 30-yard line. Uh, there was an illegal pick, I think, by uh, LSU on the play while well, probably be declined. Well, we talked about that matchup. Houston against Bo. Bo's got him a couple times. Houston's got him a couple times. This time, it would have taken a better throw. I think maybe Jamarcus Russell Pass got him on that one. Offense, number 85. Who's declined. Third down. Yep. They ran a pick play. Actually, wasn't in design. They just had a tight end run into a defensive back. That was the proper call, but decline is the proper strategy. Well, here we are. Third, Third and ten. Third down is hurt. Arkansas in this football game. Can Jamarcus Russell pull another one out of his hat? Rolls right. Looks deep, drills it, sliding catch is made by Dwayne Bow. They did it again. Yep. It's kind of a gimmick play, a little bit of a trailer route that time off of a dash. They call it a dash when the quarterback throws it out in the run. Look at that little flick. No wasted motion, and Dwayne Bow goes down and gets a nice one. I think he got his hands under that. I do too. Fifth catch of the day for Dwayne Bow. Arkansas has done a good job, though, of keeping all of their timeouts available to them. LSU has none remaining. First down on the conversion of 15 yards. Vincent, no place to go. Flag down. Near side. 
line judge. See, without Hester in the football game, that blocking position is not as well manned for LSU. Offsides, defense, number 92. Penalties five yards, previous spot, still first down. Uh, that'll Yo. bust them five. Yep. Well, Arkansas takes on Florida next week. The SEC championship in Atlanta presented by Dr. Pepper. Arkansas hoping to go in with an 11-1 record. They need a victory here. As the SEC West champions, Florida has Florida State this weekend. Their conference play has been concluded. They've only lost one. That was to Auburn. First and five. Keelan Williams is the running back. Deep back in the eye. Got him. Keith Last Jackson. Artist. Keith Jackson. Now in his senior season, his dad, part of the radio broadcast team here. Arkansas uses one of its three. The clock is stopped with two minutes and 31 seconds left. I was an offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. That is the Orville Henry Press Box here at War Memorial Stadium. Orville Henry. Longtime sports editor of the Little Rock newspaper and uh, longtime historian of Arkansas fullback of uh, football passed away a couple of years ago. 2.31 to go. And Houston Nutt, Reggie Herring on the near side. 2.31 to go. You want to know strategy, don't I you? Do. I do. That's what I'm like looking that. at you, yeah. <laughs> Well, eyeball to eyeball here. If I've got a play where I where I, I'm gonna trust Jamarcus Russell. If I got a play I feel I can get it out and get it into somebody's hands, I'll throw it. But right now, I don't I don't mind just handing it to Broussard. And force Arkansas to use another timeout. Ali Broussard, number 22, the deep back. Gets the handoff. They will use another timeout, I'm sure. Yep. There's the signal. That is their second. So five seconds run off the clock during that play. What all is at stake here? Well, BCS implications, but this is also the battle of the boot. That thing weighs 175 pounds. <clears throat> Twas the night before Christmas, and Mom didn't know that Dad's right behind her with a box Bow. This Christmas, tell her she's the greatest chapter in your life story with a gift from K Jewelers Three Stone Diamond Collection. And you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love it. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight. Man. I'll always remember how I feel tonight. Every kiss begins with K. 31-26, Arkansas, one timeout left, 2.26 to go. And I'm looking at you for strategy yeah. again. Let, let, let's look, get in the uh, huddle now. You know, LSU, you know, Jamarcus Russell is always a threat. Uh, will Les Miles want to burn another timeout? Not me. I'm going to give it to Jamarcus Russell and see if he can win a game. Put yourself in the head of the Arkansas defensive backs now. You know, you got to stop the slant pass, and you got to be aware of that wide receiver screen. If you're the DBs, you cannot get beat inside. Stop the inside move first, and then go from there. Hold on to your hat. This will be a good, good strategy session. Justin Vincent is alongside Jamarcus Russell. He'll keep it. He will not get the first down. The ball comes out. And with that tussle for the football, now they're going to spot it back at the 49-yard line. It will be fourth and one. Yeah, and he, a player is down. He called the quarterback draw that time. As you can see, Brian Johnson struggling to get up. Big offensive guard. Went with the safe. A little safer call. Spread them all out. 
We talked about Jamarcus Russell running a little bit more lately. Nice play inside. Someone just got a hand on him. Was it Elijah Butu? It got just a tip of his hand on him. Somebody just kind of laid out inside and tripped up Jamarcus Russell to make that play, and that's why he stumbled. Jamarcus Russell was the ball carrier. And the ball has been spotted. Yes, at the just inside the 49-yard line. There's Brian Johnson. Heading off, so it's going to be fourth down. Les Miles wants to make sure where that ball is spotted. This looked like it was going to open up. One more look at this. Here's a Lojibutu right there. See if he isn't the one that hits this running full speed and reaches out and gets. Yes, it is. How about that from the little guy? Reach out and tackle the six foot six quarterback. What a play. And Arkansas did use a timeout. So they are now out of timeouts. During the, uh, we had a lot of things going on there. The spotting of the ball, the injured player getting off. And Arkansas chose to use a timeout. So here we go, fourth down one. And Reggie Fish, a 5'7", 160-pound sophomore from Mesquite, Texas, is back at the 10-yard line. High and short. Right side out of bounds. Very poor punt by Chris Jackson. Spotted at the 28-yard line. 21-yard punt. How about this? Houston Nutt, a year ago in 2005, was 0-4 in games decided by seven points or less. This year, he's 3-0 in games decided by seven points or less. Can he go to 4-0 in these tight games? Well, the clock starts under the new rules when it's marked for play. So it has two minutes showing when the ball is snapped. Casey Dick, he'll go deep for McFadden. Double coverage deep, and it's Jonathan Zenon who had really good coverage. Help from LeBron Landry. That ball was underthrown by about uh, eight yards. Yep. McFadden has to almost stop on the play. One on one, Xenon against McFadden. Look at that. That's how that was way that, that, that might have been 10 yards short on the play, to tell you the truth. Now, little small points in the game. Remember their opening touchdown, they missed the extra point. Sure. That's one. Ooh. Then they had to try for two after the next touchdown. Didn't get that. Had they converted, could be a field goal possibility here, and that one's going to be a jump ball, and Xenon knocks it away. Casey Dick is having a really tough afternoon. See, this is the problem for Arkansas. They have somewhat of a you know, functional passing game. It's all built around the running game. I'm being nice to say functional. Yeah, you are. Okay, so now what do you do in a two-minute drill? Can you just hand the ball off to number five? Can you run the sweeps? Or do you finally have to have a pass offense to win a game like this with a two-minute drill? Matter of fact, Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinator, not uh, being arrogant at all, said to us the other day, they're not very good on third down, and they don't have much of a passing game. That was his assessment of Arkansas. Well, they've got a third down, and Casey Dick is 3 for 15 for 29 yards. <laughs> Fires a deep comeback pattern. Mark Kent. Hold on. It'll be fourth down and ten. See, it just, was LaRon Landry. Excuse me, Vern. Now, now just look at those three calls. And you can see the, you know, the sophistication in this offense goes to the running game. The sophistication in the pass offense. They threw a bomb. They threw a sprint out. And they threw whatever this is. Okay, this ball, you know, was possible. But Landry made a nice job to go across Monk to catch that. Fourth down and ten. A 10-game win streak on the line. A 10-game winning season for Les Miles. It was very interesting. Both running backs in the backfield here. This has got to be some type of a different play. No. Dick, deep left, man coverage. There's a battle, and it's incomplete. There are no flags. Intended for London Crawford, the freshman. Defended by Chevis Jackson, the junior. And the ball goes over on downs. Well, it was a great football game. Not a very pretty finish for Arkansas. Man-to-man -man coverage. 
great in sync coverage right there. One on one, not going to get that call. No official is going to make that call. LSU comes in and wins a big road game here again. And I don't want to hear anybody say now that this will devalue this SEC championship. If they say that, they don't know anything about college football. This is a big time toe to toe football game that was played between Arkansas and LSU. Two very good football teams. LSU, barring a Joe Pasarchik moment here, yeah. <laughs> is going to go to 10 and 2 and keep alive their hopes of a BCS bowl berth. Back to back 10 win seasons for Les Miles. And now the Ruby Tuesday player of the game, D Mac. That'll, that'll do for now, I think, is a nickname. 21 rushes, 182 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. He also threw it twice for 32 yards. A Ruby Tuesday player of the game. Two good football teams. Arkansas will go to Atlanta to take on Florida with a 10 and 2 record. And the Florida Gators, of course, have a Saturday night, uh, Saturday day encounter against Florida State. Les Miles, second season as the head coach at LSU. Consecutive 10 win seasons for the first time in school history. Jamarcus Russell had a brilliant day. 14 of 22 for 210. He hit nine of his first 10. Darren McFadden scored a touchdown on a kickoff that seemingly had brought the Arkansas Razorbacks right back in it. But then Trendon Holiday returned the ensuing kickoff for a touchdown. And that is uh, our five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler with the call. Jim Hawthorne of the LSU Radio Network. And it is Holiday at the 10. And he splits it to the outside. And he may go. Midfield, 45-40. They're not going to get him. Do you believe this? He returns it for the <laughs> touchdown. And no oh, flags back Lee there. Just another average day in the Southeastern Conference. The Arkansas Razorbacks lose at home 31-26. First time these two have ever battled as members of the top 10. Well, our uh, group invites you to see Georgia Georgia Tech coming up tomorrow. We're going to move on down to Atlanta where next Saturday night we're going to see the Arkansas Razorbacks against the Florida Gators for the SEC Championship. For Tracy Wolfson and Gary Danielson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying happy Thanksgiving from Little Rock, Arkansas. Thank you. Nine, please. Don't like stopping? Southwest has more nonstop flights than ever before. Still think they did it? Still think he didn't? Stunning new evidence and John Ramsey's first interview since Patsy's death, 48 hours Saturday. Ghost Whisper, CBS Tonight. Stay calm. We're going to save you. Stop freaking out. Hop into the basket one at a time. Save some cabbage. Sign up for Comcast Digital Voice for just $39.95 a month, every month. With unlimited local and long distance plus voicemail, you'll save $246 a year over Bell South. Just call 1-404-COMCAST. Comcast Digital Voice. It's Comcastic. most magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. Okay, okay, let's uh, skip the chit-chat and get down to business here. Now listen, I called you guys together because this office is consistently our worst performer. I need all of you thinking of ways to improve our bottom line. 
So let's just sit here a while and toss around some ideas. This isn't a conference call, Henkel. I'm actually in the room. Feel like surprising a few people? Dogs Tech, then post game, Saturday starting at 3.30 on CBS 46. This is CBS 46 News at 6. Police arrest the boyfriend accused of abducting his girlfriend and baby. And shoppers swarm the malls in search of the best deals. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Fisher. And I'm Sine Simpson. First this evening, police now know who started a house fire that left an Atlanta firefighter in grave condition. Joseph Pendergrass turned himself in late this afternoon. He says he accidentally left a candle lit at the Vine City home, and then it caught fire. I didn't want to think that I intentionally set no.